Welcome back to this third day of the online Open Doors Week at the University of Tartu. And my name is Anna Branitz, and I'm going to be hosting today three wonderful info sessions about our bachelor's programs. Today, we are going to start with the introduction of our bachelor program in business administration, and then we will continue with our info session in science and technology. And then we finalize this day with our presentation about program in medicine. Also would like to point your attention that we also will have online tours around the buildings of the University of Tartu campus. So today you will be able to see how Delta looks inside if you would like to study business administration or if you're interested in science and technology, you also will be able to see how Institute of Technology looks inside. So please don't leave us right after business administration uh, info session but stay with us a little bit longer so you will also be able to see our buildings and uh, uh, today we are going to start with our first info session for today uh, which is going to be dedicated to our mass um, our bachelor's program in business administration and today with me on this stage uh, I have a, a program manager of business administration uh, I will try to pronounce correctly his name. I was working on it. Guy Gisis. Guy Gisis uh, Asherov. And then I have two students from business administrations who are going to share their experience of studying this program as well. And I have today here with me Isabella and uh, Afalandria. Hopefully I pronounced it correctly. <laughs> I also would like to remind you that uh, uh, you have a wonderful chance to leave your questions. So if you are watching us from the workshop, uh, next to this info session, you can find the bottom Q&A and then you can type your questions. And then if your question was already asked, you can just uh, rate this question and then we will answer these questions the first ones. Also, if you are watching us from Facebook or YouTube, please also leave your questions uh, under the video and we will also answer these questions. I hope you're going to enjoy our third day of Open Doors Week and uh, you will learn a lot of information about international bachelor's programs that are offered at the University of Tartu. And now I'm going to give a floor to Guy Kisses and uh, his presentation about uh, business administration. Please, the floor is yours. Thank you very much for a nice introduction. And uh, my name is Guy Kisses Ashirov. I am a program manager of BBA program. So we are going to talk uh, about our program today and uh, mostly uh, what you are going to find in Estonia and in Tartu in, and in our program. So now, very quickly, I want to say that our uh, courses and the curriculum are divided into th four different uh, groups. So you will have some mandatory courses. These are fundamentals of business, business environment and management related courses. And you will have to select some specialty models. And there will be some elective and optional courses uh, these are the courses where you can get freely your courses and develop yourself and there will be internship opportunities and in the end of the, your third semester you will have to write your bachelor thesis or graduation exam. So in total you will have 180 credits and the most, one of the most important part here is you will have to finish your internship. So internship is a, the one of the main core that students have to go to the company to see real world and to apply their theoretical knowledge in, in, in the business. So these are the part and the courses that you are going to get in our faculty, in our school that is a business law or let's say business ethics, human resources, global economy. These are the courses actually will shape your theoretical knowledge that you may implement in, in the practical world. But this, that parts were mainly the little bit boring part. Now let's get more exciting part. So where will I study these are usually students are uh, questioning. You are going to study where we are going to have this, uh, the video session, which is we call it Delta building. 
So Delta building is uh, located in the heart of the city, uh, near to the river, in front of the, uh, the dorm and in front of the uh, supermarket. So, so you will have a quite nice view and in a very most uh, developed technologically advanced building. So this building, uh, my personal experience is I have studied in, in also in this uh, university, I have changed three different buildings. And uh, this is the last one and the most advanced one. I haven't had this experience as a student here, but as a worker, this is one of the most advanced one. I will, I will uh, ensure you that this is the best one. And uh, 28, almost 28 meters square of net space. This is a vast environment actually. And now you will see why it is a vast and big. So the, you know, the Delta building is actually means for a change in Greek, but it also means that it has three corners uh, and it unites university, industry and government. So what, what are the university side uh, faculties are located here? University of Computer Science, Mathematics, School of Economics and Business Administration where we are belong to, and the Technology and Center for Entrepreneurship and Innovation. But when we look to the industry side, we have Swedbank, Cybernetica, Statistics, uh, Estonia, Sepbank, and uh, many other uh, the, uh, companies. So this is a place for very high collaboration in, in Delta building. And yeah, I, I always envy our students when I look at them because as I mentioned before, when I was a student, we didn't have this facility here. And now they have a very huge student area, very cozy place to study for group studies and individual studies. And they have uh, different laboratories. They have even their own coffee machine and uh, dishwashing machine. And we didn't have this. This is, I envy them. And uh, so, a little bit about our university. We have been here for 83 years, and 80 employees, and uh, eight chairs, and eight curriculum. Eight is a very important number. I, I, I don't know, I like it. And we have uh, 200 students international, and 725 students. This is actually quite high number. Twen almost 25% of students are uh, are from uh, abroad and you will have a chance to interact with them. This is a huge chance to, uh, to enlarge your network. And what are these people? Let's look if you happen to come here whom you are going to see. So we have, these are our past students. Uh, these are from different buildings. So the last one is from Delta building, but others from previous buildings. And they are coming from different uh, countries. In the last COVID session, we had uh, students from nine different countries, but, uh, but I remember in the good times, we had uh, students from 18 different countries. So just imagine yourself, you are sitting with a group of students from 18 different countries. So the just random, uh, the countries where the students are from, uh, Estonia, Netherlands, uh, Turkmenistan, Azerbaijan, or Georgia, Ukraine, Russia, and many other countries, they are coming and studying, and you will have a chance to meet with these people. And this is the most important question, I think. Uh, where can I stay? So when they ask this kind of question, you should understand this question the first hand. They want to have this place of a stay as a where they can afford and the walking distance to university it should be clean and neat and peaceful international uh, environment and a lot of party so these are students so what did i do i made a very uh, investigative work you know you see the the google map and this uh, yellow oval circle uh, is uh, depicting our university building, Delta building, you see, it looks like a very Delta shape, and it's next to the river, and the other red, orange, I think it's burnt orange color, oval circles are university dorms. So the most farthest one in the down below, uh, southeast corner, you will see Ratuset 22, and the distance from Ratuset 22 to Delta Kohvik, what do you think, how long, how far it is? It is within the same building. Yeah, almost by 600 meters, actually. So, so if students 
decide to stay in that Ratsu 22, it's only 622 meters. And now I am jumping, what are these buildings? So this is Ratsu 22. It uh, I spent my one year as well when I was student there, and uh, one place uh, in a twin room cost only 117 euros. Quite affordable when you consider the uh, the, the places in, in Estonia, and it has a lot of different facilities inside and other uh, benefits. So. In general, you will have uh, three twin rooms in apartment, tenants share kitchen, bathroom, and toilets, and they have a place to play table tennis, very huge environment, and nice, cozy place. And this is dominated by mainly international students. And we have the second closest one, which is a Narva Monte 25. They almost share same uh, facility quality, so no difference. And this is another one just next to it, almost same infrastructure, almost same uh, facilities for students. And the last one, this is for not Eston uh, international students, this is for uh, Estonian students. Estonian students are also important because they, they take uh, our, mostly 33% of overall student uh, uh, admission. So if they want to stay, uh, they can stay in Narva Mante 89, and when you look from the window, you will see that it is only 50 meters away, other side of the road. So, uh, if I am student, I will stay here, and it's also cheaper. And uh, if you think that studying is a bit boring, overwhelming in a very cloudy Estonia, so you may do many different activities. So I. There are many actually, but I, I have written, you can read myself, uh, too, Delta Trends Day and uh, Delta Economics Conference, Delta Career Day, Delta X and so on. But tomorrow uh, there will be Delta Career Day in uh, Tartu University Sports Hall. So even if our current students are watching, please go tomorrow, find the companies and meet with them because they, they are going to offer you internship uh, options and uh, work opportunities. So you can meet ask your questions, and if possible, you can just directly even apply for a job there. So Delta Career Day tomorrow is important event, everyone should go. And uh, we will have this startup lab, investment club. These are more uh, the people who, have, uh, who are more entrepreneur uh, mindset, startup mindset people. So you can find yourself a very suitable clubs and you can build your, own company, and if you are very bored, like really bored, you can create your own unicorns in Estonia. So our uh, startup lab people, they help you from zero to reach to hero place. And uh, Estonia is quite famous for the unicorns. So why not to create your own uh, unicorn when you have free time? Of course, probably, I'm not sure whether you will have free time. But uh, if you have a free time, then you can uh, create your own unicorn. And if you think that, okay, I'm not a unicorn person, you want to develop your own uh, physical and mental health and cultural uh, uh, activeness, so you can go to with the swimming pools, uh, sports halls, museums, of course, and they are, all of them are providing student discounts. So you, you don't need to worry about much the uh, cost of these uh, places. But uh, I will suggest to go to the swimming pool. They have sauna, so uh, you can have a good sauna time as well. If you don't know how to swim, they have a children's pool too, so it, it shouldn't be a problem. And. Uh, after graduation, what to do? Uh, this even uh, I was uh, I was asked by my uh, parents too. What would you be after graduation? So this is very relatable. Here you can work in in, in Estonia. Most of our graduates are actually working in Estonia, <laughs> but you can also build your own company, and you can also continue studying in a master's level, and you can go abroad some other different countries. And what I can say that I I. I hide this uh, information here because other programs may envy us. Our, uh, the graduation level is the highest in our faculty. So BBA graduates, this graduate graduation rate is the highest in our Tartu University. So if you want to graduate with a good score and with a good knowledge, you should come to our faculty and our program. And uh, where should I start? Uh, you just need to take your computer 
and look our website. Uh, the application system already opened uh, by uh, 2nd of January and deadline is uh, 15th of April. We will announce our uh, results by 25th of May and school will start by 29th August. Of course, there will be some orientation days, so it's better if you come earlier upon the acceptance. And uh, what we require, I hope you have already some secondary education or you will have soon. So if you don't, if you are a primary school student, we don't accept you. And uh, English language proficiency is also required. So we want to see whether you speak, you are able to speak in English uh, or not. And, but when we evaluate your uh, applications, uh, the 40% of uh, weight will go to mathematics score and uh, the 60% will go to the motivation letter. So you should present us why you want to study with us, or what, can you add, what kind of value you will add to our value and what you are expecting from us and the, the career path you are expecting upon graduation. So all your, uh, all your feelings or your motivation, you should reflect us. But please try not to say that you want to go space because we are not sending space. Try to be realistic. Show us all your real motivation that you want to come here in Estonia and study and contribute to the, our faculty. And uh, I put some useful links in case uh, I am limited uh, for some knowledge. Uh, you, can, you can check by yourself and even correct me if necessary. And uh, this is another view of our Tartu University and also indicator of the final slide. So uh, thank you very much. If you have questions, please feel free to uh, ask. Thank you again. Thank you very much for your wonderful presentation and also for introducing the building and presenting so many links. I would like also to tell to our participants that we are going to send the slides to everyone who is participating so you will be able to check all of these links uh, at home and check all of the recommended pages by the program manager. Also about Delta building, so I would also uh, uh, remind you that we are going to have online tour in the building itself, so you will be able this beautiful building and where you're actually going to be studying and what kind of opportunities are here inside of the building. And right now we are going to move to the student uh, presentations and here with me I have two students from uh, business administration. I have Isabella and I have uh, Afel Andrea who are going to talk a little bit about their experience, uh, their experience of studying business administration. So the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Gagasis, could I please have the... Thank you. So, hi everyone, I'm Isabella. I'm Opel Andrea. And we are first year business administration students, and today we will present to you our program. So, what are the topics we're covering today? First of all, we'll give a little overview about the program itself, then, what attracted us to this program, then, a little bit about our professors. Next, we will move on to talk about the future career possibilities, and lastly, about the environment. You know, I already imagine myself running my own business or being in a managerial position of an international company. What about you, Isabella, in 10 years? Hmm, I think in 10 years' time, I'd like to be the CEO of my own company, walking across the empire that I built myself. <laughs> That's so cool. So what about you, dear listeners? As any of these uh, keywords on the slides picked your interests, I'm quite sure that this program fits you like a glove. So now we'll go a little bit more in depth of what the program actually envisions. So a little bit about the program. We have international students. Something that really piqued my interest when I was applying was the fact that I could share my experience with people from all over the world, learn about different cultures and different languages. And so in our class, we actually have people from eight different countries, which is very, very cool. Um, as far as the lecturers go, we also have a wide variety of lecturers from many different countries all over the world. And um, they are very experienced in what they teach us and what they talk about. Um, something I learned about myself actually last semester is that I'm quite the team player. So we have so many different courses where we kind of dive into self-improvement and team building exercises, which helps you really understand um, the role of uh, being in a team and kind of understanding how teams work, which is frankly one of the most best experiences that you could get. Um, 
Also part of the curriculum, something that's mandatory, is to take an internship. And so quite frequently I actually get emails um, of different internship opportunities from the program manager and from the University of Tartu itself. Um, something, something actually very cool is uh, the obligatory and elective courses that we can take. So obligatory courses, um, the amount of credits actually that you take differ every semester, but you have the freedom to choose your own elective courses. So definitely there are some specific elective courses that are meant for business students, but you also have the freedom to choose between different ones that pique your interest. Um, something that the pandemic actually helped along with is hybrid studies. A lot of uh, lecturers actually offer the chance to take their courses online. We also have some pre-recorded classes that we can also manage in our own time schedule. And some teachers actually let you take their courses uh, online or in the class. So, Apelandra, what attracted you to the program? So as you previously mentioned, the diversity of students, it's amazing. I was imagining that if I come to this school, I can make friends and future business partners from so many different countries. And also the courses, when I first saw them, I was like a little kid in a candy shop. I wanted to have the knowledge of each one of those courses. And I think that the first ones that really uh, picked my interest was like management and entrepreneurship. And what's actually so cool is that having uh, learned in university for fun semester already, I find it very convenient that, that the courses are so diverse. For example, we have so many different real life cases, uh, teamwork exercises, we have different guest lecturers, and also uh, when we do home assignments, we can combine the knowledge of different uh, topics at once. Also, do you know that the uh, University of Tartu is ranked in 250 best uh, universities uh, in uh, business and economics and also is a forerunner of uh, business education and research in Estonia? Uh, what else? Uh, I think it's very cool that we start, uh, study business in Tartu because Tartu is a big startup city. You know, all year around we have different startup uh, events and also in our school we have startup lab that helps young students to create their own business ideas by mentoring. Also, student can, uh, students can take part in extracurricular activities. Myself, I'm uh, taking part in uh, investments club, but also I know that many students actually like uh, marketing club a lot. Mm -hmm. So now diving into the skills that you can acquire um, while learning business administration. So we're talking about finance, talking about business, relations and economy. We have multiple courses on finance, like corporate finance, accounting and banking, which helps us kind of understand how money works and how to manage your own money. For business, we have different classes, like Apelandra mentioned, principles of entrepreneurship and uh, principles of management. In economy, we have classes ranging from microeconomics to macroeconomics. We also had a class called quantitative methods in economics. And um, as far as relations go, I think the whole diversity in our class, having people from eight different countries, learning how to communicate with different people and cultures, also having classes like business communication, really helps us with the relations side of it. So, a little bit about the people who are behind this magic. Uh, I will first of all bring out Anna Reino, who is the new head of economics and business administration, but also Kaike Shashirov, Andres Kusik and Christian Pentus, who we've had so many great lectures already together. And I really look forward for the next ones. So next we're going to dive into the future possibilities after acquiring a bachelor's and master's in business administration. So we're talking about data scientist, project manager, financial marketer, investment banker, blockchain expert, HR manager, digital marketer, and all of them that you could see over here. Um, uh, motivational speaker Patrick David actually said that it is the easiest time in the history of mankind to become a millionaire today. And let's not even talk about how easy it is to start your own company. So I think there's so many opportunities out there that are just at the reach of your hand that it's very important to grasp onto. And little, little emphasis of the building again, you know that we're studying in this beautiful Delta management building that is located on the edge of uh, River Emayogi. And one of the things that students really like about this building is actually on the second floor we have those honeycombs where we can uh, make uh, group projects and really feel professional and make the magic happen. And also do you know Isabella or even remember that we have actually sauna and grill at school and also on the rooftop we have swings. 
I actually remember when we used to hang out with our class up there on the swings on the roof. That was so fun. Yeah, that's true. And to make this uh, uh, picture more vivid to you, here's the picture of our class, actually. Uh, we started last uh, semester together. It's the picture taken in the uh, 1st September, basically. And uh, actually, you can see that the two other pictures are taken quite recently, one on uh, uh, Valentine's Day, another one somewhere in the winter. And actually, we spend time also together outside school time. And I think it's very important to have such good friends. And that ends it all. Thank you very much for your attention. And hopefully, we will see you next year in Tartu. Thank you. Thank you very much for so interactive and nice presentation, also showing all the pictures and all of your uh, emotions and uh, your experience studying business administration. Thank you very much. We also received uh, some questions, so I guess it's uh, time to open our Q&A session and actually take the questions from our participants uh, and answer them. Uh, so we have some questions that are related to admission process. Uh, so probably I will ask uh, Guy Kesish as uh, uh, you're the program manager. So basically the first question, what, are, what is the admission criteria for business administration? So uh, we will, <clears throat> we have two primary uh, admission criteria is the mathematics and the motivation letter. I have already mentioned this. So if we look your uh, the high school mathematic grades, the last one, and then, uh, but we give these mathematics uh, grades the 40% weight. That, so it means even if your mathematics is not that well, uh, the weight will be taken 40%, but we also want to see your uh, motivation letter. So we want to know whether how much motivated you are, whether you want to come to Estonia and you want to participate our program and you want to what to do after the, the, the graduation. So we really want to know your uh, uh, the class side, yeah, 40%, but we also want to know what you have uh, done so far in your life and what you want to do during the education and what you want to do after the education. So we, I think they should emphasize mostly on a motivation letter because now mat mathematics scores and other tests are probably are already given. They can't change much, but they can enhance their motivation and then they can reflect to their motivation letter too. So I think they can, they should uh, the focus on, on, on motivation letter. Thank you very much. You already covered another question about motivation letter as well. Uh, there is one very related question to this one. So what the average GPA should I have in order to apply? And is it important actually for the program? Oh, that's a very tough question. So uh, average GPA, I don't, when I assess this works, I don't really look what are the uh, the average GPAs they should have because our admission office looks and then they sort based on uh, the information they have and then they provide the, the, the most suitable applicants uh, after this uh, the first uh, first filtering. So try to have as best as possible GPA, but we look at the more specifically mathematics. So not GPA per se. Let's say if your uh, if your biology is 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 not well enough. Let's say you got three in Estonian terms, but your mathematics is five. So we will uh, probably consider your mathematics because uh, we are not the, the biology department. I'm sorry, the biology, but we, we don't. We we like if you have a more mathematical and quantitative skills. Okay. Thank you very much. Also, to my knowledge, because I'm a little bit related to admission office, there is no limitation uh, with the average grades. Uh, but the uh, the higher grade in mass you have, the bigger chances uh, to get into the program. Also, have one question which is related to motivation letter, and I would like to ask the student perspective. Maybe, Afalandra, you can uh, um, comment on that. So what kind of tips you can give to our participants how to write a good motivation letter from your experience, since you already wrote it and you are enrolled to the program? Hmm, that's a good question. Thank you. Uh, I think that uh, you should start writing it enough before not to let it like be in the last evening, couple of hours before the submission. And actually, one, one thing that I like to do is actually read the motivation letters of other people. Uh, you can get great ideas, you can see how's the wording, 
grab out some good phrases and if you put it all together you can analyze it once more and actually see is it like if, if some for example Kaikoshi sees it and reads it is he like saying you're a worthy person I want you to be in my course and I want you to like study here and I want to give you the new knowledge from my course uh, so I think like think what are your perspectives be honest be like tell how you feel and uh, put down all the things that you have accomplished in life and you still have a couple of months so you can still do some great things if you don't have many great things to put down there so yeah I would say that's it there is also a question to students if it's possible to contact to contact you afterwards so we are going to send the slides I think you had like your emails on the slide uh, um, no unfortunately not but, but but can we let you know our emails and then you can send them to the students definitely yes okay. yes so if you don't mind then the students would like to ask you some tips maybe uh, over an email already so there is a question also about accommodation in dormitory so how difficult it is to get the place in the dormitory specifically Ratusa 22 but we can also talk about the other dormitories maybe Isabella you can comment on that if you are living in dormitory Yes, thank you very much. So actually, I am living in uh, Naromanta 89 with Apalandra. And um, I think, as Gagashis was saying before, that if you're coming from abroad, I think the chances of you getting into Rato's dormitory is probably a lot higher, if that's where you want to go. But the, uh, the, um, the way it all went down was you had to um, register in the system. And then uh, you had to write down which dormitories you wanted to get into first. And if you want to get in a twin room, or if you have someone that you want to go with, but uh, it's not that difficult of a process. So it's pretty easy and it goes fast. And, and in addition, I have shown the pictures only three, but these are the ones, no, not three, four. These are the ones are in 600 meters uh, radius. So actually we, in Tartu, we have nine different dorms. So uh, you are not limited. If you say you want to walk every day one more kilometer, then you, you increase your chance of getting other dorms. So, but these 600 uh, meter radius uh, dorms are those students who are lazy but they want to study so they can walk 600 meters I guess also it is worth to mention that we have city bikes in the in the city so you can also rent out the bike or you can just get yourself a bike and you can also uh, cycle this one kilometer so it's not a problem because everything can is very much reachable in the uh, in the city uh, so next question we have about internship. So, uh, uh, so I guess uh, from the presentation it was already mentioned that internship is a compulsory part of the program. So how to find an internship and if the university is helping in uh, finding an internship? So. Uh Internship is multidimensional thing. So first thing what we expect from student is their own uh, initiation. So they have to be very active and actively searching and seeking a new internship opportunities. But what I will say, what a university offer is we have a photo lab. So it's like a feature lab. Uh, so students go and see the possible offers provided by uh, the inter. Uh, these firms, the companies, so they they list all the uh, the offers that uh, sent to the students, and they can check uh, whether they 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 find something uh, suitable for themselves. So, but primary thing here, internship is a first stage where you kind of show or indicate that you are active and ambitious enough to find your future workplace or place to develop yourself. So it's uh, rather. We expect from students to go and show, find your own internship place because this is mandatory for your own uh, own uh, development. Like it's 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 the same. Like after graduation, you seek your own uh, career development. It's the same, but it's like a demo version. Like in, we are in demo studio. It's like in a, a demo version. You go and find your own place. But in in some cases, uh, some firms say, okay, uh, why do you want to do as internship? And if you think that your uh, this sole uh, motivation is not enough, you can say that, okay, look, we have internship mandatory course and uh, my program manager will also recommend me. So you can contact with him. And then in, in that 
place, I will uh, fully uh, be in your service to, to help you to, to get in there. So it shouldn't be a problem. But primary initiation should uh, uh, should start from uh, student. Then we will get involved by time upon the development. Thank you very much. Maybe also students can comment on that if you already had your internship or if you are planning to have. Um, I'm, I'm not doing an internship yet, but I'm planning to. So actually, a couple of weeks ago, uh, there was this internship opportunity to apply to this bank, Luminor. And then Swedbank is also a very popular one where business administration students go to do their internship. I think another really good place to search for job opportunities, openings, and internships is also LinkedIn. So that's something that I really recommend the new students to do, make a LinkedIn account. We also had at our marketing office of the university two years ago, we had an intern from business administration uh, and uh, we had international actually student from Kazakhstan uh, who conducted internship uh, in our office as well. So it's also possible to find something at the university as well. All right, let's move to the next uh, questions. Uh, so uh, uh, the questions are addressed to students. How accessible are professor at the program? Uh, so who would like to answer? Um, is the question more like how, how easy how is it? How reachable maybe, how you can like, if you have any questions, if you can write or approach the professor and how is the collaboration maybe going between student and professor? Well, um, as much as I can say, there are, if you search on the Tartu, the University of Tartu website, you can find any of your lecturer teacher's email addresses. So it's very accessible. Um, the teachers also have um, specific office hours from where you can contact them and reach them. But I think um, that, I think it's pretty easily reachable. We also have the fourth floor in the Delta Center where, where all the teachers' cabinets are located. And then if, if you need something urgently, then you can always go there to contact your teacher. Thank you very much. Uh, next question we have about how much practical training does the program include? Maybe, Kai Kesesh, you can... Uh, so, I don't what, know. Well, maybe what kind of practical courses are uh, offered, maybe in terms of creating your own company or... Oh. This is also again uh, dependent on student, but uh, primarily uh, we we want to deliver these uh, theoretical uh, works, uh, theoretical courses, theoretical knowledge to to students. But uh, the first steps, very tiny baby steps of a practical work, is actually covered in the courses. So the one thing uh, overall, our I think university is uh, doing these kind of things, uh, the teamwork. So the teamwork is actually a main component of uh, practical world and the most of courses have, uh, have uh, delivered the tasks to students which require a teamwork. So if you're able to develop your basic skills in teamwork, like coordination, collaboration with other people to do specific part of the task, then you will be you will be almost ready to go into the practical world. But the, the most direct, uh, the, the linked course is, I think, internship. That, that's the primary thing. So it's a, the practical world. But uh, upon the all skills you got here, you will be more or less ready, at this theoretical wise, to, to be involved in, in, in practical world, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, yes, we have another question which is also related to courses. So are the courses more uh, lecture-based or discussion-based? Maybe, Afalandra, you can cover it from your perspective. Hmm. I would say that the courses are very different. As I said, they were diverse. But for example, just before this uh, Open Doors Day, I came from the class that we the teacher was uh, in front of the class and we only had discussion. Uh, he had, uh, like, he asked us say uh, out questions loud. Uh, you can basically read the, the slides at home. So it was a very lively conversation and uh, that's the best way to get answers to all of our questions. And I would say, like, there isn't uh, very many, uh, like, lectures where teacher just, uh, like, gives all the theoretical knowledge to you and you can't discuss anything, you can always ask and you get the answer for your questions. So um, 
I like the balance, I would say. It's great, and uh, sometimes you need more theoretical knowledge, and then some, like, later, like, uh, end of the courses, you can get more practical. But I would say it's very, like, great balance, and uh, I liked it that way. Thank you very much. It's good to have a balance. Uh, so next question we have about age limitations. So what is the maximum age to get into the program? No. I can say first sentence we don't have age limitation, but uh, but to be realistic, uh, I'm not sure whether it's a good idea to start my program when you reach 40, 50, age of 50, because you already have your own business and so on. And there is, a, I don't know, I think there is no age limitation, but uh, to be realistic, uh, our, uh, our most of candidates are applying, let's say, under 25. Uh, average age maybe 20 so you can consider based on that yeah mm -hmm. okay we have another uh, question about competition so how high is the competition and how difficult is to get a study spot oh competition is quite high i think because uh, every year around we receive 200 uh, application and uh, only 25 of them end up here so uh, how many percent so you can just you can one, one in a ten uh, <laughs> so it's it's quite high i will say mm -hmm. thank you very much there is also a question about scholarship in the air is the uh, program offers any uh, does the program offer any scholarships yes we offer tuition v uh, option so upon the uh, application and assessment, we we check the best candidates, and uh, we have five tuition we favor uh, places. So only best five applicants uh, among these uh, applicants will get uh, free uh, free seats. It means they will uh, their all school uh, related costs are uh, covered. So they will study for free, and we don't really take into account their nationality. Nothing. So based on Total merit pays uh, five places for studying free. Yeah, and the rest of them will be paying the uh, the uh, the tuition fee. Thank you very much. Uh, there is another question about the average cost of living in Estonia. So maybe Isabella, you can comment on that. How much, uh, for example, an average student need per month uh, in order to be able to live in Tartu? So um, the dormitories are quite cheap, actually over here, depending on which one you get into. But let's see, um, without taking into account any of the school fees, let's say if they get the tuition fee, then maybe maybe like a good start would be like 500 euros a month, maybe even less. I think it depends on which dormitory that you live in or, or you know, if you wanna have a social life and go out and do some fun activities, then I think it can completely range from like 400 to 700, 800 maybe. Yeah, I have actually calculated this cost and wanted to share on the slides, but I, I didn't. And uh, based on my calculations, 400 to 450 is in average. Of course, this uh, calculation also includes your 10 to 15 euros uh, euro spending in pub uh, once, twice a week, and your uh, sports gym uh, expenditures and museum visits and many other expenses, including your accommodation and food. So 400 to 450 is uh, average budget, I think, for uh, for a student. But of course, it depends on, uh, on your uh, taste. If you have more money, then you spend more money. That's it. <laughs> Yeah, that probably depends on each uh, person individually, so how much you're going out, how much you cook at home maybe, and how much you prefer to uh, have some, to, to participate in different events or uh, pubs, for example, live. Uh, so yes, uh, we have another questions, a question that is a bit uh, personal, but let's uh, try to answer it as well. My high school math is average, but in the years between, I have advanced more than high school math because I love to learn. I am 34 years old now. How else can I demonstrate my math skills so as not to reduce my chances of being accepted? I guess this, maybe you can suggest something. So, so math skills? Math uh, skills are low, but uh, there is... Uh, um, a development during this uh, year so how else uh, our applicant can can basically prove um, 
tête de, de... So one thing I think uh, uh, of course we will look is uh, the high school grades which was I think 20 years ago of upon because he's 30 yes, something yeah. so yes. uh, in 20 years so much thing have changed in in mathematics world and overall education and what I will suggest is to take some international exams like some kind of SAT related test or any kind of a test that proves that uh, he has acquired or he has some kind of uh, mathematical quantitative skills which is uh, sufficient enough to study with us but uh, in that kind of uh, we have to also consider his age so it's better you take some kind of international exam and then uh, prove us that uh, okay despite your mathematics grade in the school was uh, not very high and you want to add additional uh, support then I think for not only for this student for all students if they think that mathematics um, score or grade was low due to the some interesting facts or some reasons, maybe they were sick, uh, they can get some international exam and send us, and then we will, of course, definitely consider. So any kind of extra document that, uh, that, uh, that enhance the uh, quality of application are welcome. We, we don't really limit. And uh, not only mathematics, for example, if they have done something um, uh, extracurriculum, some uh, activism, like more, uh, more active things, conference participation or extra uh, certificates related to extra self-development courses, they should also include them because we are looking for a, a very developed candidates. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for your answer. Uh, we have some questions like uh, after graduation. I would call them this, uh, uh, give them this title. So uh, uh, one question is, uh, after graduating business administration, what master's program can I study? Maybe, Kai Kesesh, you can uh, 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 suggest. It depends, again, what you want to do, because we don't really uh, form a student, because our aim is not to form, we make them to feel that they can form themselves. So uh, I have written many motivation letters to my students. Uh, one is uh, going to Politecnico Milano, I think, and uh, for finance. And one student went to uh, finance program in uh, KU Leuven. And one student went to, uh, went to uh, United States for uh, MBA program. And uh, some students uh, in, in, in the Mannheim economics program. Mm -hmm. So quite diverse, but mainly in field of uh, economics, finance and business. I guess the question was uh, in terms of University of Tartu. So if they want to continue, yes, oh, we continue have at actually, the same university, we have, yeah. We have actually two, uh, two, even three master's programs, English language based, that two of them are highly correlated with, uh, with uh, economics program, which is uh, quantitative economics and uh, information technology management. And uh, I know, uh, I have written also some motivation letter to our students to participate in our uh, school uh, program ITM. So international uh, information technology management, which is quite good because you may have a, a good, uh, you may gain some uh, knowledge and uh, skills, uh, which makes you to be ready in startup world and uh, IT world as well, and how to manage this kind of thing. So, so yeah, we have uh, already enough programs. But if you think that you don't want to be in economics field at all, we have Asian program. So they can continue more in, in, in the political and the Asian related studies, which is it's very niche and unique for Estonia, that the University of Tartu offers uh, some studies for specifically Asian countries, uh, which is very important in these days. So it's, it's up to their taste, but they can apply all these uh, programs, I think. But I don't really uh, uh, guarantee for a successful application for analytics chemistry program because it's totally irrelevant. So uh, for our our program, they have a high chance to continue. Yeah, definitely. It's worth to mention that we have quite wide variety of master's programs. So if you are a little bit limited with bachelor's programs, because you offer only three programs uh, in English, so with master's, uh, there shouldn't be any problems. Uh, so within this topic, I have a question about Estonian language. So how difficult is Estonian? Would you recommend to study Estonian? And is Estonian necessary in the future to find a job? 
So uh, I can I can uh, answer partially, but I my the students are also a better speaker than I am. So uh, I have arrived here like a almost eight years ago to Estonia and uh, in eight years uh, I developed my Estonian and uh, Estonian language is quite helpful because it's a national language here and uh, in, in work uh, many places uh, some international companies don't really ask Estonian but some companies see as an asset so if you want to have a great advantage over other international candidates it's better to learn during your studies uh, Estonian uh, because our university provides uh, Estonian courses quite very well actually and you will have a chance to, to develop it uh, through practice with your uh, the colleagues but Estonian language is uh, is I think uh, quite important but if you don't know this language you will I think by by time learn even if you are uh, if you haven't uh, put enough effort and uh, and uh, spend time on it then uh, some companies international companies uh, they may offer uh, fully English language based uh, job uh, possibilities in Estonia Thank you very much. Do you have anything to add or we can move to another question? Um, I'll add one thing. So I moved to Estonia about 10 years ago and I might say that I'm, I'm still learning to this day but I can say that it's very, very beneficial to actually understand the language and the people here definitely respect you a little more when you understand their culture because of the language. And I mean, it's not that hard to start and the programs are very good that offer, offer the Estonian course so I definitely recommend it. I guess it's also worth to mention that there are different languages that can be taken for free during studying the program. So you can take Estonian or any other language at any level at the university. So as long as you can manage to deal with your curriculum and then you can take additional classes as well. Uh, we have one uh, question which is related to the previous one. I need additional clarification on the answer for my first question. I'm 34 years old now. What are my chances of admission in the program? Oh, as, I, as I told, we don't really limit people by age. So please feel free to uh, apply and uh, see what are your chances. I can't say I can't really uh, discriminate you or I can't really give you a privilege because of your age you know so so it's all up to your motivation letter and your grades and the, the if that's the same person the other documents that prove your mathematics is quite contemporary and still uh, strong for uh, for this uh, program Mm -hmm. Next question. Hello, I'm from Ghana. I completed high school last year in October and my certificate is not out yet because it's going to take a very long time. Can I apply with my results? Uh, I mean, results is transcript, I think, what he meant. Yeah, it's, uh, it's probably possible if university give yeah sorry if if, if school gives uh, with a certain um, certain uh, the stamps and the certain approval uh, but uh, this kind of more technical validity of document thing should be asked to admission office yes. i am not in the position to say and i don't want to overwrite and overrule their thing so it's better to ask them yeah Yes, we would recommend you to just email our admission office and the email is admissions at uh, ut.e. So you can just email them directly with your documents and just make sure that uh, everything is fine. So unfortunately, we are out of time and we tried to answer as many questions as we could. Uh, but uh, if you have any questions left, uh, you're going to receive the slides and you can also email separately our program manager, manager and also our students and then they will answer you. Uh, your questions. I hope you enjoyed our first info session today and I hope you are going to apply to business administration and don't forget about the application deadline which is 15th of April and we are looking forward to receive uh, your application and uh, maybe see you next uh, academic year. Thank you for being with us and stay with us for the next uh, info session.
Welcome back. We are continuing with our next info session, which is dedicated to our bachelor program in science and technology. And today with me on the stage, I have program director of the program, Ilona Faustova, who is going to introduce the program. And I have two students from this program, Vyacheslav and Yuli, who are going to talk about their experience of studying this program and their experience of uh, living in Estonia. I also would like to remind you that after all uh, info sessions today, we are going to have online tours uh, around the University of Tartu campus. And if you stay with us, you can also uh, see how Institute of Technology looks inside. It's uh, the place where you are going to study science and technology in the future. And a small reminder about questions uh, that you can leave to us. So you can write your question in WorkSup uh, under Q&A, or you can leave your questions as comments under Facebook or YouTube, and then we are going to answer them online. And feel free to ask your questions uh, from program manager as well as from students who are also can share their uh, perspective and uh, their experience. So right now, I guess we are ready to start with our first presentation. And Ilona, please, the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, hello to everyone. And we will talk today about uh, science and technology program, uh, how Anna has mentioned. And uh, at the beginning, I will start with a brief overview about uh, uh, Tartu, about Tartu University. So. Tartu is situated around 200 kilometers from the capital of Estonia, from Tallinn, and it's a city of good thoughts. So we are uh, naming Tartu as intellectual capital of Estonia. Here lives around 100,000 people, and uh, every fifth person is a student or someone who is connected to university, like worker in university. So it's really a youth town full of uh, students uh, with cozy atmosphere and uh, uh, you will feel here comfortable. And um, we are pretty proud uh, that uh, our university belongs to top 1.2% of the world's best universities. So it's not only the best one in Baltics, but also uh, the it, in top uh, world's best universities. Uh, and. Um, here you can see some other rankings of UT and uh, uh, I want to mention that if you are getting a high education in Tartu universities and it qualifies over the world and uh, the world is open for you. Uh, so you don't will not have any problems if you want to continue studies uh, in Europe, in the United States or somewhere else in, uh, in the world after graduating from Tartu University. But as well you have a possibilities to continue also in Tartu University. And um, uh, it's also not only one of the best universities, but also uh, the oldest one in Estonia. Uh, and uh, it has uh, four faculties, art and humanities, social sciences, science and technology, and medicine. And as we are talking today about science and technology program, so it belongs to science and technology faculty. Uh, and uh, also, not only education is on a high level in our university, but also in uh, uh, and also science is in, on a good level in our un, uh, university. So we can say that, uh, for example, 54 UT scientists belongs to the top 1% of the most seated scientists in the world. And uh, so if you're interested not only in education, but also to do science, it's also a very good place to do that. And um, if you haven't been uh, in Estonia, in Tartu, and want to get to know how it, the town looks like, you can visit our virtual tour uh, on our website and get familiar to our university, our town. Uh, but you can see already from the pictures that it's full of the buildings of university, which again shows that it's a really university city. And now let's talk uh, more about programs, science and technology program, bachelor's program. And uh, it uh, uh, 
provides a broad overview of natural and exact sciences and technologies, and it has three specializations. It's bioengineering and robotics, it's uh, science, uh, chemistry and material sciences, and also genetics and biotechnology. And uh, when you are entering uh, the program, then at the beginning you are entering science and technology program, and only after three semesters, one and a half year, you specialize in one or another specialization. <clears throat> so why to choose science and technology? So this uh, uh, one, what I just mentioned, is one of the advantages also of the program, because that you uh, entering at the beginning just uh, science and technology and only after one and a half year you specializing in uh, one of the specializations. Uh, when you graduate from high school then it's often you have very abstract imagination about specialization and uh, it's pretty hard to choose between uh, some similar or uh, specialization or specializations of one field uh, because you haven't tried uh, it and it's very good that you are, have the possibility to get practical experience, theoretical knowledge, to try the specialization be before you choose. So for that you have uh, three semesters and only after that you are choosing and uh, uh, also one of the advantages of the program is that we acquire both theoretical and practical skills and we emphasize practical skills. Already on the first semester of first year you have practicals in the labs, also in the second and third semester, so uh, before you will choose your specialization you really get to know uh, all, all of them. And uh, also it's an international program, it had, uh, has also a wide range of uh, exchange programs. So uh, a bit more in detail about program. It has different models, uh, what you can see just now on the screen. Uh, but in spite that you uh, study one and a half year uh, the basics, it's still in total three years, so one and a half year of uh, basic uh, courses and then one and a half year of spe specialization courses. So it's uh, like the most all of the bachelor degree programs, three years and 180 uh, credits you have to gain to graduate, which makes 30 credits per semester. And then the end you have a graduation thesis, not exam, but graduation thesis. Uh, just a bit more in detail about models. First, when you're entering uh, the program, you have to pass uh, such a very general but uh, basics, uh, what you will need in spite uh, uh, on the specialization you will choose in the future. For example, chemistry, math, uh, programming, physics, biology, all these uh, courses and all this knowledge you need uh, uh, in spite uh, on the specialization which will be chosen in future. So you're studying three semesters with these uh, courses, uh, also uh, doing practicals in different uh, fields. Uh, as I told you already on the first year, first semester, you have such a practical like introductory laboratory course. It, uh, uh, it is going in four different uh, institutes, in Tartu University, in four different institutes, an Institute of Physics, Institute of Chemistry, Institute of uh, Technology, and Institute of Molecular Biology. So, and the additional possibility what you have uh, uh, to do more, better choice of your specialization and to do practicals is the course laboratory projects. It's not compulsory one, it's elective one, but uh, it's already on the second semester of first year. And we really recommend to take to uh, everyone the course because you will do three projects from different fields. You will do three projects, one from bioengineering and robotics, another one in chemistry and material sciences, and the third one from genetics and biotechnology. So you will uh, get familiar not only with specializations, you will get familiar with uh, institutes, different institutes, different research groups. So it will also make easier to choose not only specialization but also uh, which uh, uh, research group to choose to write the bachelor thesis. Uh, so usually uh, we have uh, got a very positive feedback of this uh, course. Uh, 
So after you are passing three semesters and uh, all these practicals and everything, you specialize after one and a half year. And for example, if you have uh, chosen the bioengineering and robotics specializations, then you have to pass all these three models of courses. So uh, you cannot mix and match uh, different specialization models, uh, but you can take the courses from another one uh, specialization as electives but to graduate you have to pass all three models additionally all three models of your specialization so these are bioengineering and robotics specialization courses if you chose uh, chemistry and material science specializations then it's uh, this uh, uh, models of courses and um, uh, regarding uh, genetics and biotechnology specialization, uh, these courses. And you can see that uh, in specialization, we also emphasize practical skills. There are a lot of practicals and uh, not only theoretical lectures, not only theoretical no knowledge, but we also acquire it in, in practice. Additionally, you have to choose elective courses for 12 credits. Uh, it's uh, some list of the courses which is uh, connected to the field of science and technology. And additionally, you can take, uh, you have to take optional courses. Uh, it's courses from the whole university, any courses of university that don't have to be connected to science and technology field. You can take philosophy, you can take languages, you can, uh, take drawing classes, uh, whatever you, you want or whatever you are interested in. And at the end, everyone has to defend bachelor thesis. So it will end uh, in summer with bachelor thesis defense. Uh, there is no the final exam, but uh, thesis defense. And if you fulfill all these models, then you are granted with bachelor degree in science and technology. One additional advantage of the program, or at least we always say that it's a big advantage, it's the iGEM competition. It's also one of the courses in our program, it's elective courses, so it's volunteer, you can participate or not, but uh, we have team consists, uh, which consists of uh, only science and technology students, and uh, we participate in competition. iGEM is the largest worldwide synthetic biology competition, and the main goal is to take any uh, world problem and try to resolve it. So to offer uh, the option how we could uh, resolve the problem using synthetic biology. And every year we are uh, making new team and this team uh, participates in the competition. So uh, uh, here you can see uh, from previous years our team pictures and you are doing, you are getting a huge practical experience with the uh, participating in the team. You get uh, a lot of skills and knowledge which are very valuable in your specialization and uh, what you will need in your future studies and in future research works or in life. So, and it's not only about uh, scientific skills, but uh, skills in labs, but also uh, different um, communication and d different soft skills are needed for this competition. We have to do different cooperations with another one teams. We have to ask advices from professors. We are contacting professors. We are creating a huge network, organizing events, uh, popularizing uh, science, uh, our project. And yeah, and for sure we are um, trying to resolve the one of the world's problem all together. And uh, during the years we have participated uh, pretty successfully in this competition. Our team has got three gold medals and two silver medals. But total there are around 400 teams participating in this uh, uh, competition. Besides um, iGEM, uh, to gain the uh, uh, experience abroad, you, you have also a lot of exchange opportunities in our university and in our program. So you can see uh, a lot of uh, partner universities all over the world. So if you have the interest to spend semester abroad, you also will have this opportunity. 
studying in our program. And uh, what we need? We need for applying to the program. If you're interested to apply, you can, uh, you, we need an official copy of your previous education, uh, also a proof of English. And uh, there are a lot of different international tests which qualifies. And uh, uh, when we are counting your admission point, then we need the state exam result of final grade in mathematics or, and also uh, biology, chemistry or physics. So one of uh, the best, which is the best one. And also motivation letter. So pay attention to motivation letter because it's very uh, important entering university, entering the program and definitely answer all uh, questions what we're asking and also mention everything which uh, makes you better candidate uh, uh, than another one. As, uh, for example, if you have participated in Olympiads or in uh, uh, Victorines or maybe you uh, uh, have done some kind of project related to the field, so all this include to the motivation letter for sure, because very often motivator, motivation letter decides are you in a program or, or not, are you getting the tutation waiver scholarship or not. So the tutation waiver scholarship, so we have for you and also non-EU uh, candidates and it will cover the fee of, uh, of the program, which is 5,000 euro per year. So you have, you don't need to apply separately for tutation waiver scholarship, it will be automatically regarding the rating of admission points. And uh, don't forget the important dates. You have to apply till April 15 if you want to study on this program. And we will welcome you. And now I will give a floor to our students who will talk a little bit more about living in Estonia and also about the program in general. Thank you very much, Ilona, for your presentation. Uh, it was really nice uh, to see how many opportunities you have, iGEM, exchange opportunities, and how many opportunities this program gives to you. And right now I will give a floor to our students. Maybe you can also talk a little bit uh, first, introduce yourself, uh, where did you come from, which year of study you are. Maybe if you have already chosen your specialization, you can also mention about it, please. Okay. Uh, my name is Julie. I am uh, from Georgia, but I graduated school in Ukraine. So I already had the uh, idea in mind to study abroad. Um, and one of my first choices was obviously science and technology program because of all the reasons um, our program director already told you, because it's one of the most uh, uh, valuable programs in Estonia, which gives you a lot of experience, not only theoretical, but also practical. And you also can join one of the most uh, successful research labs. Um, Slava? Vyacheslav, would you like to say a few words about yourself? Yeah, yeah of course. Uh, my name is Vyacheslav. I am from, uh, from Russia. I am on the third year of this program. I, am, I will soon finish it. Uh, I chose this program because it allowed me an opportunity to look into multiple fields and uh, it allowed me to make a more knowledge, knowledgeable choice about my future for specialization. And also this program allowed me to work in one of the best uh, laboratories in Europe, I think, and uh, it started my science career. career. What's your specialization? Sorry. Uh, bioengineering and robotics. Bioengineering. Mm -hmm. Great. So now you can continue with your slides and also share your perspective as students studying this program. Okay, so I'll talk a little bit about living in Estonia. Uh, living in Estonia is uh, quite comfortable. Estonia is a really nice country. It's, uh, it's uh, really quiet here. If people here are also very welcoming. We will help you, uh, help you with getting uh, accustomed to living in this country. On the slide, you can see uh, price for accommodation in dormitories. This, this is the price for, um, for if you want to live alone in your room, it's actually cheaper. Half of, you will have to pay, pay the half of it if you live with somebody. Accommodation is the rooms itself and the dormitories are pretty nice. Um, you meet really interesting people in the dormitories and your <laughs> neighbors are 
your neighbor is going to be every, pretty much from any country in the world. You can learn a, a lot about culture of their country, of their people, and it's an interesting experience. Also, sometimes before uh, hazing happens, well, unfortunately, the last uh, two years it was also not possible to organize it. Sometimes you will meet your course mates earlier than you go to actual meetings for uh, faculty or for your program. For example, one of my course mates was already my flatmate. So, yeah, this way you also are more um, in a better position to find friends and uh, someone like-minded as you. Which dormitory do you live in? Uh, I live in Narva 27. Uh, yeah. How difficult was to get a spot in the dormitory? Uh, it was actually pretty easy because uh, when I got my letter that I was already accepted to the program, uh, right after that I got following email regarding the accommodation, how I could apply. Everything was very well explained and when I applied in a matter of uh, probably a week or two I already got the answer that I will be living in one room. Also the instructions were also very clear how to get to your uh, uh, living, uh, how, how to get to your room and uh, what you needed to do. So, yeah, in case we had some questions, we were also always very welcome to ask anyone who was already living there or who was representative from uh, either university or even from our program. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And here in the picture, you can see our dormitory, Ratus 22, which is one of the most probably famous dormitories for international students. And we are also having a tour inside of the dormitory after our last info session. So you can also, we'll be able to see it uh, um, in the end of today's uh, day. And you can continue with your uh, slides. Here you can see the library of uh, University of Tartu, uh, which is also a very comfortable and cozy place to go and even with your uh, group of students. There are small rooms which you can uh, book in advance and to work on some group projects if you cannot gather in uh, dormitory or if in the institute there are already no places left. So it's very student-friendly uh, uh, surrounding and environment in Tartu, I would say. So also Tartu offers a lot of interesting activities outside studies. Estonia Student Network uh, always creates some events for, stu for all students of Tartu. We can arrange from uh, pub crawls to excursions to to hiking in the forest. Also, there is a lot of events connect which, uh, which will tell you about the uh, culture of Estonia, which will help you to understand the people of Estonia better. We also already have some questions about social scene in Tartu and is it uh, how many events are happening and if it's not going to be boring to live in Tartu, so maybe you can already comment on that. Yeah, it's absolutely not boring to live in Tartu or even spend a whole year in Tartu without going abroad <laughs> or going back to your home country because not only there are in the Tartu itself these uh, summer activities, but um, the iGym competition that uh, Ilona mentioned, uh, during summer you can actually already start working on the projects about which you were already brainstorming before that. And in summer actually, a lot of people get very valuable lab experience and uh, in the beginning of, of already the autumn semester there are even more uh, um, intensive and uh, very long uh, working process going on. Thank you. Uh, so also about not, uh, student life and how not to be bored here. There is a lot of events happening. Not all of them are public, not all of them are organized by Tartu University and the Estonia Student Network, but a lot of them are organized by the students themselves. And these events can get pretty wild. <laughs> so they happen every Friday, every, every Thursday, every Wednesday, so you are not going to get bored, <laughs> believe me. Thank you very much. Do you have any more slides? or? Yeah, sure. 
Yeah, and this is a very actually good slide in our presentation that uh, yeah our program and science and technology program is actually a family because be it our shared project or some subjects, all the students who are say uh, already ahead in the years of education, they can always give you very valuable advices they can share with their experience and uh, help you with anything you will ask help for. So yes, you are very welcome to ask anyone for help. Uh, in the first place, our program director and also everyone who is uh, included and associated here. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Uh, I think, I guess we are slowly starting our Q&A uh, session as well. Um, also, I see the last slide on the screen that if you have any questions, you can always contact Ilona. Uh, you can see here her email and we are also going to email you all of the presentations. So you're going to have the recording and the presentation as well. However, I would also suggest you to leave your questions right now because this is a great opportunity to ask your questions uh, uh, from the program manager and also from students because they also can suggest and give you lots of tips. I already uh, kind of uh, uh, switched to Q&A session because I see that uh, there are questions coming and I have already started to ask in our students some questions. But there is a follow-up question which just came about the summer. So what do people do during uh, the summer instead of returning home? Maybe uh, Julie or Vyacheslav, you can uh, tell about your summer and what you can actually do in Tartu. Um. My first summer, for example, it was already 2020 when there were a lot of travel restrictions. So it was not a good option to go to your home country. Uh, I personally spent my summer working on a project, which uh, probably was much better and more productive and worth more than just uh, I don't know, a week or two week worth trip. And actually during this summer, I got a lot more friends than during the first two semesters because during the semester you're more, um, say, uh, focused on studying and adapting to new environment. But this first summer and partially second summer as well was very engaging with your course mates and your colleagues and yeah. I think it is obvious that Julie is a hard-working person if she was spending her summer to work on a project. <laughs> Vyacheslav, what about you? Uh, I worked on the same project with Julie. <laughs> <laughs> but, and actually we worked for, only for both our summers here. We, we spent them working on the same project. project. So all of them were iGEM. But if you are not a hard-working person and you want to relax, once again, a lot of students organize themselves, they have parties, where a lot of bars open. You can uh, visit, uh, visit uh, Tallinn also, if you want to. You can uh, travel around Estonia, you can visit beautiful Estonian uh, forests. There's a lot of uh, hiking roads in Estonia, actually, if you're a fan of that. We, and they usually lead to pretty interesting places, places which show you the history and culture of Estonia. We actually just received one question, which is very related to what you just said. So how is it possible to balance social life and studies? So maybe you can shortly give some tips since you already started talking that you spent your summer working on a project. Vyacheslav, maybe you can uh, say a few words. Well, it's, it's indeed a hard task to balance your work life and, uh, and uh, just living in general. My tips are simple. Don't uh, overwork yourself. Remember what you have friends which, which want to meet you. If they call you to a party, answer them. If plan your workload in, in a way that you have some hours to spend on, on your friends and family. That's basically it. So time management is important. Yeah, it's really important. <laughs> All right, uh, let's get back to our other questions, because there are questions about admissions, of course, as many applicants are really worried about their application process as well. So we have a question from the applicant. As a bachelor's student, what are the options to continue working and earning through the degree? Can we choose optional courses from the science and technology uh, courses only? 
um, regarding the optional courses, you can choose courses from whole university. You are not limited with your, with your choice. And about working, it's uh, again uh, the question uh, of balance because um, uh, probably, especially on the first year, it's pretty complicated to work and to study at the same time because uh, you are not only uh, focusing on the studies, but you're also adapting to the new atmosphere, to the new uh, regulations, rules, studying, so everything is new for you because uh, you just graduated from high school and here it's already, the studying is a bit different, uh, everything is different and also a country is different. So probably it's, it would be a bit stressful for the first semester at least. But um, if you uh, in future can uh, be very good time manager and uh, uh, combine studies and work, then working is not prohibited, but work will be not excuse for not done exams or studies. So you can not find an excuse. But one good possibility is uh, to start working in some kind of research lab, may lab maybe. It's not so easy to find maybe for the bachelor's level students, but still uh, pretty, I think a big even part of our students are at the same time working in the labs, uh, not starting from first year, but at least from the second year and getting some kind of stipends for that. Thank you very much. Uh, we have another question about IGM. So many people probably got inspired by the opportunities uh, um, which is provided. So how can I join IGM team? Uh, where, maybe Ilona yeah. start and then uh, yep. Julie can also comment on that afterwards. Yeah, uh, very easily. As you become a science and technology student, uh, then you, everyone can apply to our uh, team. So we are taking everyone who wants to be a part of the uh, iGEM team and but the amount of work that we, you will spend in the team, it's already also uh, related to you. So you can choose that just to participate a bit, uh, not to do the whole project, but uh, you also can be involved, totally involved and like uh, Slava and uh, Julie told, they for example spent uh, two summers doing uh, iGEM projects, uh, uh, but it was not compulsory, so but at some point it becomes your hobby and you uh, get friends inside of the team and you are doing with your friends uh, uh, a project. So from one hand it sounds like a job like a work and it's uh, actually a time consuming and it's really a, a hard work as well but uh, as it's uh, from the other side it's already like community it's a community of friends and you're not only working uh, under the project doing something what you like and what you want to do but also uh, organizing events spending time together I don't know drinking tea together, <laughs> communicating a, and so on. Yep. Yeah, it seems like a, a big job, but it's rewarding. <laughs> Julie, would you like to say something? Um, probably I cannot add much <laughs> to what already said, but uh, for example, in the team, there is a big variety of what you can do and with what you can contribute to the team. For example, maybe in the beginning, your pipetting sk skills are not so good. You can help uh, I don't know, a small group to, for example, engage public into your project, to deliver the message of this project to people who are maybe not so, uh, who don't have that well good understanding in science, or maybe help raising some funds, or maybe find some other specialists and professors from the field to help you with the project and provide you with uh, like different point of view on your project from outside of the team. Yeah, do workshops, organize workshops, events, and so maybe we just uh, also do some posters, drawing skills are needed also in, <laughs> and styling skills also are needed for iGEM team. So everyone will find what wants to do in the team. Which is very important for overall development uh, and uh, future career perspective, probably to have all of these qualifications and try out 
and develop your skills. Yes, absolutely. But for example, also in already 2nd October, we also organized our own workshop, which was a scientific art exhibition and escape room, where we also had a lot of uh, first year students, last year and this year as well, and not only from science and technology, but also master students who were very interested in what our team was doing, and uh, they were also very interested into the event itself. Thank you very much. Uh, we have a question about uh, uh, how accessible professors are at science and technology. Maybe Vyacheslav, you can comment on this question. For example, Ilona, if you can approach her or wor work with her, how is it going at your department, the collaboration between student and professor? Well, Ilona is one of the most accessible people in our university. Uh, most of the professors are we are always happy to help you and, re and reply to you. Uh, personally, I didn't admit a professor who ignored letters or questions from students, but uh, yeah, I, don't f I think most of our professors are really accessible and always happy to help you or spend some time with you to explain you the topic which you have tr tr troubles with better. Uh, we have another question related more to admissions. So uh, the question if, is, if I have a low grade in math, but I have a good grade in biology and physics, do I have chances to get a study place? Uh, I think yes, definitely have a chance. It, for sure, it also depends how bad is math. <laughs> but uh, yeah, math is providing 40% of admission points. So, and the second grade uh, provides another one, 40%, and also motivation letter. So, uh, in total, you have to have at least 66 uh, uh, percent uh, to qualify to the program. It doesn't mean that you will get a place but at least your documents will be uh, uh, evaluated. Uh, and I think if one of the grade is really good, then yeah, in total you will get enough uh, admission points to, to, be in, to be in our program. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, the next question about how international is the program? Uh, maybe Luna. Has uh, yeah, our program is really international. So I think that uh, at the moment we have uh, around uh, students from around 40 different car countries. So uh, yeah, it's, you can find here students from all over the world. Mm -hmm. So we have also question: How uh, big is the competition, and uh, how many study places do you have? And also there are some questions about scholarships, so maybe we can combine all of these questions, Ilona, and if you can answer uh, all together. Yes, sure. The, uh, the competition depends on each year, but um, from one hand, uh, for the tutation waiver scholarship, it's really big competition. Uh, just if some numbers that um, we every year we have around 200 applications and uh, we have but we have 50 uh, places uh, in program and only around uh, at the moment around five six uh, tutation waiver scholarships. So for scholarships you really have to have I think uh, both maximum grades and also to get a really high score on motivation letter and uh, then you have a chance to get a tutation waiver scholarship. But uh, to get a place in our program it's it's possible. Uh, it's uh, the competition a bit less uh, than for tutation waiver scholarship. Mm -hmm. I will take another question which is related to Estonian language. So if you guys are studying Estonian and uh, if you think Estonian is necessary to uh, find a job in Estonia and uh, also how difficult it is to study Estonian. Maybe Julie or Vyacheslav. Um, well, I personally haven't studied uh, Estonian language as a subject. But when you are in Estonia, obviously you will have Estonian friends, Estonian professors, you will be in an Estonian environment, how international it wouldn't be. So at some point you will start understanding some of it. But as, as for learning, it can be quite, quite complicated, I would say. Um, Vyacheslav, maybe did you try to learn Estonian? Yeah, I had uh, two courses about in, on Estonian language. And I can conf confirm that it's hard to study. 
сам Some things in this language, uh, no, at least, at least for me, the Russian-speaking person, it was hard to understand. For example, Estonian language doesn't have genders in it. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it makes hard to correctly pronounce things and some, sometimes understand them. And, but uh, you don't actually need Estonian to comfortably live in uh, Tartu or in Estonia generally because a lot of people I speak English. Or if you are also a Russian-speaking person, a lot of people also speak Russian. Uh, about jobs, um, I would say what you can get a job without you knowing Estonian language, but many many jobs would you need at least some basic skills about in Estonia. For example, if you want to work in a shop or you want to work as a waiter, you kind of need to know Estonian. Thank you very much. Uh, we have a question about exchange studies. So I know that Ilona, uh, during her presentation, introduced different exchange possibilities. There is a question, where can I go for exchange? For, for maybe uh, Ilona. Actually, there are a lot of different partner universities all over the world. Uh, so if you remember on one of the slides, I showed the map with uh, uh, partner universities. And um, I think it includes everything, the whole Europe and so Asia, uh, Asia America, uh, all continents, I think. So there are lots of possibilities. And uh, of course, uh, you will get all of the information once you're a student and you will be able to see the full list of the countries and universities is where you can go as well. Uh, so we have some questions about motivation letters, so how to write a successful motivation letter, do I need to indicate the specialization already in motivation letter? Maybe Ilona you can start and uh, discuss it from your perspective and then students also can share their experience because they already wrote this motivation letter so they can also share some tips with you. Uh, yeah, uh, as I tell you, uh, as I told already, that motivation letter is pretty important. Uh, very often we get uh, uh, candidates with equal uh, grades on the both uh, s subjects, so the motivation letter decides are you in or out, are you getting a stipend or not. And uh, we always tell that very carefully, uh, uh, read through all the questions what we're asking. There is four or five questions, four I think questions, and uh, there is also a question about specialization, what you are thinking uh, you want to specialize in, uh, but it doesn't mean that later you cannot change it. Just for us, it's important to see uh, what thoughts you have, what, uh, why you want to study in our program, what is your motivation, and uh, uh, that's why we also ask in the specialization, so what you are thinking about and what you are going to do and how you are going to apply your uh, education in future career, why you need to study science and technology, why is it your choice. And also, uh, I always ask you definitely if you have anything which will make uh, from you a better candidate than others write in motivation letter because if you will just include some for example documents from you got some certificates from olympiad or competition so uh, victorines or something like that uh, we cannot uh, count in it uh, in uh, admission points but if you will write it in your motivation letter it can uh, give you some benefit uh, also if you have done some project on the field sometimes already studying in the school you you are doing some kind of projects uh, in cooperation with university so if you have uh, interest in some kind of uh, literature you are reading articles on the field anything which will connect you to the field and to make you a better candidate even if you for example are going graduate from school with a medal also you can mention it in a motivation letter but don't do a too long one so it's also not uh, good to write too long uh, motivation letters so it's always good around one to uh, a four pages thank you very much julie would you like to add some some stuff some tips not much, but just 
be honest in your motivation letter because when you arrive here it will be already obvious for everyone what you knew, what you learned and what you're capable of. And if you think that oh maybe this competition was not so important, still include it because it might actually be of a valuable experience when you start facing different, um, I don't know, challenges during your studies. Thank you very much. Uh, we have another question to Ilona. Are all applicants have a chance to get full tuition waiver scholarships? Yes. All candidates have uh, a chance to get uh, the tuition waiver fee, uh, scholarship, which will cover the fee of studies. If I don't have my certificate of graduation yet, can I apply with transcript of records? Also, yes. Yeah. Yes, you are applying with the transcript of records of the last semester of the year. Mm -hmm. What labs do you have at the Science and Technology Department? Uh, maybe, uh, Julie, let's, <laughs> let's a little bit let Ilona <laughs> rest. <laughs> Uh, one of the subjects that was already presented, uh, laboratory projects, uh, will already in the second semester will give you very good possibility, like personally, to see different labs from three different specializations. There are, of, of course, synthetic biology labs. There are um, well, molecular biology labs, cell biology labs. Uh, also, there are engineering labs, such as uh, robotics or electronics. There are chemistry labs. So there is a huge variety of where you can find yourself working and on what kind of project. Also, there are sometimes um, uh, combined labs where you also need some knowledge of chemistry and biology or biology and robotics. So, Slava, maybe you can also add from your personal experience. Uh, I don't have much to add, but uh, we have pretty much, we have laboratories pretty much connected to any field that you uh, can be interested in. It. in uh, you even can, be, can try to get a place in a laboratory connected to biomedicine or medicine in general because biomedicum, biomedicum sometimes takes people from our program. I guess also it's worth to mention that we are going to have a video tour around the uh, Institute of Technology where we also introduce all of our labs so you can also see your future place where you are going to spend a lot of time probably. And we have received one question, uh, maybe Vyacheslav you can take it. How much time do you spend for studies? <laughs> uh, it takes a lot of time to study. Uh, but to be honest, I spend most of my time working in the laboratory. <laughs> uh, studies uh, a substantial, take a substantial amount of my time, time, but not that much. So it depends on how if efficiently you study, mostly. It's of course individual for everyone. Someone studies better from practical experience, someone studies better from books. And also students are usually helping each other with notes or even explaining to each other because some subject might be easy for you, some subject may be a bit difficult. And for someone it might be vice versa, so students are also helping each other balance everything. Yeah. yeah, just wanted to add that yes, uh, as Slava told that he's spending more time uh, working in the lab because it's again like we emphasize in our programs that the major majority of knowledge you are getting while practicing on practice. So uh, working in the lab is uh, straight connected to your studies as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, so we have also a question about internship. So uh, is it compulsory part of the program and can I conduct my internship in the lab at the university? Maybe Ilona. Uh, the internship is not compulsory, it's elective, but yeah, you have this possibility if you want uh, then uh, to go, for example, for Erasmus exchange program for semester. And some, if you're already doing your bachelor thesis in one of the labs, then uh, the lab even can 
help you with the, some contacts to find some contacts with uh, uh, partner uh, research labs all, all over the world. But uh, if you are not working or if uh, the lab have no any suggestions, then it's uh, a student's job to find the place they want to do internship in. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Uh, there is one also related question that is it possible to work and study at the same time and maybe you have such cases or would you maybe recommend or not? Uh, maybe we will ask Vyacheslav. Uh, yeah, you obviously can work and study, but it's an individual thing for everybody, for everyone. Like, I know people who work and study uh, but some some of them work in the laboratories, some work in some work in like service related fields, just to earn some money. But um, it's uh, it's not that hard to manage your time divided between work and study. But it depends solely on you. If you feel like you can do it, obviously do it. Work experience is always useful. Ilona, would you recommend to do that? I would, it, it depends on the person, but uh, what I recommend, I recommend to uh, find the work in laboratory, in research group, where you can combine very nicely your studies and, uh, and work, because especially if you will write the thesis in the same lab, then your projects are connected to your studies. Uh, it's like recommended, but uh, I know that some students need to earn their own pocket money and uh, find, finding uh, a job in the lab is not very easy task, uh, for, especially for first year bachelor students. Uh, then, so I cannot tell that it's very easy to combine these two because uh, our program is intense and you have to study still a lot. But uh, yes, some students are working, uh, like Slava said, in service as well and uh, combining studies and uh, working. Thank you very much. Unfortunately, our time is up. So if you still have any questions left, please uh, contact Ilona or please also contact students. We will try, if you don't mind, to send also their emails. So if you have some questions uh, that uh, you can ask from students, you can also ask. But thank you very much, everyone, for being with us. I hope you learned quite a lot of new information, which is going to be useful during your admission process and which will help you to for example, write a successful motivation letter or make everything in order as it should be. And also thank you very much our dear speakers for being with us today for introducing science and technology. I wish uh, to our applicants only to apply. Don't forget about the application deadline, which is 15th of April. And uh, thank you for being with us and uh, stay with us because we still have one info session left uh, in medicine, which will start in a while.
Welcome back to our last info session for today, which is dedicated to our program in medicine. I also would like to point out that medicine program is not a simple bachelor's program because it's a joint bachelor's and master's program in English that lasts six years. So this program is uh, a little bit different from our other bachelor's programs that were introduced today. And today with me, I have Rene Karner and Kadri uh, Weber, who are going to introduce the program and they're going to show you the slides and tell you more about medicine, about curriculum, and uh, they just describe everything which you will need to know about the program. And also I have here Aziza, who is going to share her student experience because she's studying currently this program. So she will also share her perspective. I also would like to remind you that we are having this wonderful opportunity to leave your questions. So if you are watching us from WorkSup, you can see that next to the info session in medicine, then there is a Q&A button where you can write your questions. And then we are going to answer them online. Or if you are watching us from YouTube, or if you are watching us from Facebook, then you can just comment under the video and we are also will try to answer these uh, questions as well. Also, I would like to ask you not to leave right after the info session because after the info session we are going to have online tours around the University of Tartu campus. And we are also having a tour in Biomedicum building where actually the medicine uh, program is taking place. So please stay with us and you will see more how the building looks inside. So I guess that would be it from my side and I will give a floor to our speakers who are going to uh, introduce uh, medicine. So please, Rene and Kadri, the floor is yours. Thank you, Anna. Uh, so hi, um, I'm Kadri and I'm the academic affairs specialist uh, in the faculty of medicine. Hello, my name is Rene and I am the head of the dean's office. And um, uh, as it said, medicine uh, cures diseases, but only doctors can cure patients. And uh, Tartu University is in Estonia the only place in Estonia where you can study medicine and you can study in English as well. Afterwards, uh, our students will describe how it will be. Okay, so a few words about the program. As, uh, as it was said before, uh, it's an integrated bachelor's and master studies program and the duration of this program is six years. Uh, after graduating, uh, you get a degree in medicine. Uh, the language of instruction, instruction is English, but uh, some knowledge of Estonian language is also require, required uh, to communicate with uh, local patients. Uh, the tuition fee for our program is 12,000 euros per academic year or 6,000 euros per semester and we don't have any scholarships or tuition waivers. Uh, our uh, studies are uh, very specific uh, we, and they are held in core system. This means that uh, they are in uh, all the subjects are predetermined order. Uh, let's say in first year you have uh, anatomy and biology and so far, and you can't go to the next year uh, if you haven't done all the exams from the first year. So it's, uh, this is quite important to keep in mind. And yes, this could be hard. Uh, the program uh, consists of uh, compulsory courses mostly, but we also have uh, elective and optional subjects in our uh, curriculum. And uh, elective courses can be selected from a uh, uh, list of courses, uh, but optional subjects can be taken from any faculty from the university. Uh, we also have Estonian language courses that our uh, first and second and third year students take uh, to be able to communicate with the patients. Uh, now uh, some words about application deadlines. Uh, the deadline is 15 of April. Uh, uh, and uh, the final admission results will be available from 
25th May, and we have the entrance interview via web in 11th of May. If, in case we have uh, a lot of candidates, then uh, there could be more dates as well. And the academic year starts in 29th of August, and uh, we are all welcoming you here. Um, about the admission uh, more, uh, this year we are um, a bit different admission program. Uh, we have a BMAT test, this is new this year, and unfortunately in case you haven't registered to the BMAT, you can't do it anymore, but hopefully you all have done it already. Uh, uh, if you have uh, this bio biomedical admission test uh, scores, uh, then the next thing you should do is motivational letter. Uh, and afterwards, uh, the best ones will be uh, asked to the entrance interview, uh, which is, as I said, on 11th of May. Uh, we accept 24 students each year, so right now we have about 150 uh, international students in all six years. Um, all the 24 students are divided into two groups because we believe that uh, studying uh, in smaller groups is more effective. Uh, the competition is about uh, nine or ten students per study place and our program has the highest competition among uh, the international programs in University of Tartu. Um, yeah. <laughs> So uh, our studies are basically divided into uh, two. We have preclinical courses and clinical courses. Uh, the first three years is what we call preclinical studies. And uh, these studies are held in mainly in these uh, two buildings that you can uh, see in the pictures, Biomedicum and Chemicum. They are located very nearby in the same campus, so as all our buildings. And uh, from the, actually from the third year, uh, spring semester, you are going to Tartu University Hospital. The uh, hospital is uh, renewing himself, it's uh, already uh, very much of very, very new buildings. Uh, we have the simulation center, so uh, you can uh, study uh, with uh, patients, but uh, already we have uh, clinical dolls or something like that, I think, uh, where the students can practice. And, yes. <laughs> uh, so in their sixth year, uh, our students need to complete clinical practice. Uh, the clinical practice uh, consists of uh, five parts. We have uh, surgery practice, internal medicine practice, emergency medicine practice, uh, family medicine practice and elective practice. Uh, so the students spent the whole year in different healthcare uh, institutions or hospitals in Estonia or anywhere abroad. And after you have done the clinical practice, there will be a um, uh, final examination. And after that, you are the uh, doctor. Uh, in Estonia, we say Üldarst. It means just general doctor. General doctor. And uh, if you want to, uh, and uh, if you find Estonia a nice place to stay, you can uh, prolong your studies here. You can take uh, postgraduate specialist medical training. Uh, we call it residency training. It's uh, about four to five years, depend from the uh, speciality. Uh, and we have 44 different programs. Uh, this programs are held in Estonia, but after six years in medical studies, you already could speak in Estonian quite well, I think. Um, the benefits of the program. Uh, if you come here, uh, after six years, uh, you can speak in Estonian language. Uh, uh, you can have a permanent living permit, if you're a foreign resident uh, and after graduation you have the document which certify the registration in Estonian Health Board as a physician. And as I said, uh, the future is yours. So, will it be easy? No. Worth it? 
Absolutely. Thanks. Thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, I will encourage you to leave your questions because this is the right place to ask your question from the specialist who can immediately give you advices and answer uh, your questions. But now we are going to move to students' uh, presentation and we will see how difficult is it for actually students to be enrolled to this program and how these this studies are conducted as well. So Aziza, the floor is yours. Hi, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so my name is Ziza Bello and uh, here's my perspective. So just a quick introduction. Uh, I'm currently a fifth year med student and I'm from the UK and here are some of my hobbies like photography and language learning, I guess, yeah. <laughs> Um, so I entered in 2017, uh, September, obviously, and um, I guess the structure of the course has been outlined already. But um, yeah, so first two and a half years, we were in two groups when we were doing preclinical subjects. Obviously, those were randomly assigned. Um, and it was, I guess, one of the highlights of preclinicals was probably anatomy and the dissection course, especially. Uh, also, I guess, let's say pharmacology was probably one of the harder subjects which we learned in third year, but um, yeah, it was all necessary for the clinical half, so that's the latter two and a half or three and a half years, and then that's when we get split into three groups and we get to actually choose our own groups, and um, unfortunately, like, when I started the second half of third year, um, the pandemic hit, so it wasn't really the greatest, but it was still, um, we still managed to have some in-person classes, so that was really nice. So um, just to say, because it's an international course, so here are some of the places where um, other international students are from. Most of them are from Finland, because like, it's kind of like a they have five med schools and it's kind of like a sixth option for them. But we do have um, uh, people from all over the world, like Malaysia, obviously I'm from the UK. We have Japan, America, these all these countries. And one thing I really like about our classmates are that, um, or about my classmates, are that they're quite, there's quite a large age range. So there's many people in different stages of their lives. We have parents, we have people who have done master's degrees. I came straight from high school. And so we all have um, different perspectives um, when studying. And I think it's really nice to be exposed to such a range of people. Yep. And plus uh, the fact that we have a small, like it's only 24 max English students per year. So as you can see, this picture was taken like um, two years ago and it's basically everyone. We're quite tight knit and we get on quite well and it's easier. Like if you have a large um, group of people, you might not know everyone, but we're like kind of like a family almost. <laughs> So study experience. Um, so in terms of English language, um, obviously I'm a native speaker. So coming to a country where English isn't the main language was like an adjustment. But uh, most of, everyone is more or less understandable and everyone can more or less understand you as well. So obviously there are teachers with better English proficiency than others. But otherwise, the, it doesn't really affect the experience that much. And um, what I really like about the teachers is that they're really willing to like fully under, uh, explain things to you so that you can understand it sometimes because some processes, they just don't click or you don't understand them well. But um, the teachers are always happy to like really delve in and make sure you understand. Or if there are other topics like not necessarily in the, or that will come up in the exam, but it's still interesting and you want to know about, then the teachers are also willing to um, delve into these other topics and you can have a really fruitful discussion and learn loads of things. Um, so just some random bits about, uh, uh, I guess, while I've been at med school. Um, for the most part, so the Estonian students and the English students are pretty much separate. There was one course um, about research work where they paired us up with the Estonian students, so that was nice um, kind of feeling like properly integrated and getting to know some of the Estonian students and made some friends that way. Um, and also just saying like clinical years, uh, 
feels a lot better than the preclinical years. Just finally putting the science into action and interviewing patients and um, yeah, applying all your knowledge to real people's lives and being in the hospital kind of makes you remember, oh yeah, I'm a med student, I'm here to become a doctor kind of thing. Because when you're just learning like sciences and biochemistry and stuff, it can, the goal can kind of feel far away. So it's something to look forward to. Um, okay, so when I started, we only had the first two years of Estonian lessons, so I guess it's changed now. But um, yeah, we learned up to actually B1.2, I guess it was slightly off, but yeah because in third year we do interview patients and most of them don't speak English because, you know, the older generation may not necessarily speak English, so it's nice to learn another language. Yeah. <laughs> so, as was mentioned earlier, um, we have the chance to have optional courses, well, we need to take optional courses, but I really like the fact that we're not limited because I think in other countries, um, outside, like, Non-medical courses don't give you credits. So I've taken things like Korean language. Um, if you can see, I took, last semester I took a uh, course in the philosophy department about social media and democracy. And um, the ability to just learn all these random subjects and be a more well-rounded individual because it's easy to be lost in medicine. And obviously once you graduate, you're just gonna be a doctor. So having, being able to explore other interests, I think is very important so that you can have like, an actual life outside being a med student. <laughs> so, yeah, okay, so the buildings have been explained already, but um, yeah, that's basically where we, where we have classes. Oh, here's another picture of um, the, my English cohort. Um, we took it in first year, very nostalgic. <laughs> but, yeah, and um, also we have the language classes in the city center, which is quite a distance away from all the other science buildings in the hospital. But um, it's nice to be in a different building from time to time. And then obviously as a student, you can study in the university library, in cafes around the city, um, and also the other faculties, like I could just walk into the chemistry faculty or the computer science faculty and just go to the library and everywhere is more or less open for you to study. There's no shortage of places. So what have I been involved in while I've been here over the last four and a half years? There are two med student associations. Well, so there's one Estonian med student association and they're really um, they do a lot of work and they're around the country, around Estonia and in terms of educating the public and it's really nice to be part of this organisation. Although, obviously everything is in Estonian so if you want to join it you really have to firm those language skills, if that makes sense. And also the um, majority, so obviously the majority of the international students are currently Finnish, and so they have their own f uh, med student organization for Finnish students in uh, Estonia, in Tartu, but, um, but it is open to everyone, like I'm part of it, um, and they're very welcoming and they do try to integrate um, non-Finnish speakers, like there are events that happen in English, and like for example, this picture is from a very recent event where they were celebrating their 25th anniversary, and so, yeah. It was really fancy, as you can see, and a very eye-opening experience to mm, Finnish culture, I guess. <laughs> uh, I also currently take part in research. So uh, I wanted to become a neurologist or psychiatrist, something um, to do with the brain. So uh, I am currently working or taking part in uh, neuroscience area of research. And it's been really interesting to say the least. Uh, it's m not very clinical. Obviously I'm working in a lab and so it was a nice um, experience, like a completely different experience to medicine and being in lab meetings and all these things. And we got to present, that's my friend in the top picture, presenting our work at the science conference that they hold here in the university every year, I think. Yeah, every year. And hopefully I'll be presenting mm, this year. We'll see if it happens, yeah. <laughs> uh, I've also been part of the Korean Culture Club. Uh, 
the bottom picture was from a play that we did four years ago. Uh, a, a Korean play, of course, although there were subtitles for non-Korean speakers, and they do webinars and stuff. The Erasmus Student Network ho holds events for exchange students, but also just any student, really. I'm not an exchange student, and I've participated in so many events over the years. So it's really open to anyone, and it's definitely a great way to make friends and really have more of a well-rounded student life instead of being buried in the books all the time. And uh, during COVID, the hospital requested the help of healthcare students, so med, med students and nursing students. Uh, they inv asked some of us to come and disinfect like the isolators that they were bringing COVID patients in for, or potential COVID patients in the emergency department. So that was uh, a nice, it was an interesting experience. It was very early in the pandemic. And yeah, so that top picture was from before, like the mask mandate. We weren't breaking rules. This was like back in March. So, but yeah, so we're, um, it was a very interesting experience. Actually, like it was um, proper work and working in the hospital, being in the hospital outside of classes. Obviously we didn't have classes at the time, but yeah, it was nice to work with the emergency department staff and just being in that clinical environment. So what lessons have I learned so far from living here? Um, cultural exchanges. I am from London, which is admittedly very diverse. And so when I came here at the ripe old age of 19, uh, I did think that I was somewhat exposed to a lot of different cultures, but here just gave me another whole different variety of cultures to be exposed to. We don't really learn, well, I haven't seen that many um, people from like the Baltics or Central Asia in my parts of London. And so it was really nice to find out about all the cultures in this area, like people from Kazakhstan, etc., cetera, would come in on exchange and listening to um, their stories and their cultures have, has been really interesting and eye-opening for me. And also, um, Coming to a whole different country where English isn't the main language um, by myself on the other side of the continent was quite an experience. I never really had to travel far for my education. It was all within walking distance and now I'm just literally just living alone. But luckily, thank goodness for the internet, I can just video call home and stuff. Luckily, it hasn't been that much of an issue, especially because I have good friends around me and a support network. So yeah, make friends, it's very important. <laughs> And uh, some main principles that I've, I guess, come to realize even more. So this seems like a cliche, but the world is so big and so small at the same time. I say it's small, obviously, because of the technology, modern technology allowing us to fly all over the world wherever we can, wherever we want in like less than a day. And seeing all these cultures from international students being concentrated in one area and finding out so much about the world. And then when you find out about the world, you see how big it is and how diverse our experiences are. And now I have more excuses to go to different countries because of all the friends I've made. So like, for example, I went to like some, one of the Canary Islands just to visit a friend because yeah, and um, also, like I mentioned earlier, the wide variety of age ages in our course. So it really showed me that there is no rush or even if you pursue a career and you decide that it's not for you, it's never too late to change your mind and do what you actually want to do. Even if you've done, for example, accounting for like 10 years and you realize, I don't want to be an accountant anymore, I actually want to be a doctor, for example, even if it's a super long process, if you really want to do it, then you should at least try so that you know that you can't regret any of your decisions and you've done what you can to be satisfied. So, yeah. Um, we wrote a little, we made a little vlog, blog, sorry, um, on the university blog website. If you want to check out, the link is there. I don't know if you can copy paste or screenshot or something. But yeah, <laughs> thank you for listening. I'm done. <laughs> thank you very much, Aziza, for your presentation. And uh, we are going to send this presentation after we are done with our event. So you will be also able to click the link and to check the um, uh, the videos, uh, as I understood, the vlog, right? Oh, is it? Oh, 
Okay. It's a blog. It's written. It's a blog. Yeah. Okay, so you can. Sorry. Uh, sorry. Yeah, you can be able to read the blog, and also you can be able to check the slides one more time if you're interested or have any other questions. So right now, I guess uh, it's time to move to our next uh, uh, big uh, part of this info session, which is a Q&A session. So we already have received some of the questions and uh, uh, the first one would be what other countries accept this degree? Maybe Irene or Katri? Uh, all European Union? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Uh, another question that we have to uh, Aziza, how do you manage to, com to combine social life and studies? Um, <laughs> yeah, it's quite hard. I think it depends on how you study. And I think you also need to learn how to study smarter, not harder. Like instead of, so if you're efficient with your studies and purposefully make time to relax, um, and try not to be a perfectionist also, because then you'll definitely not have time to rest. So purposely making, allocating time to rest or have fun with your friends or just go to see a random event is very important, even if you don't uh, necessarily achieve everything you want to in terms of your studies. But um, obviously you should try and study as much as you can, but I think purposefully making that balance is very important. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. We have also a question about the biomedicum test. Could you tell a little bit more about this test? Actually, no, mm, uh, but uh, I think we can manage to have some links. And I think in our website, in your university website, there is link to this uh, test and uh, there is more information about it, where you can do it, how you can do it, what you should know for doing it well and etc. Mm -hmm. There is a little bit related question to this. Is it possible to take this test in my country? Um, yeah, it's also the information is available in this biomed test uh, website, I think. And there's a, a huge list of the countries where you can take it. And uh, I think due to COVID restrictions, they also allow it, uh, allow to take it online. So, yes. That's perfect. It's a little bit new for us because previously we accepted SAT test, but right now it's a new test that we will start uh, uh, only uh, admission uh, that we actually implemented during the admissions only this year. So yes. So if you have any questions about this test, so it's it would be the best to go to the uh, program web, web page and there you can find all of the uh, information regarding this test. So another question that I accept, is it possible to go for exchange during studying medicine? Yes, uh, Erasmus Exchange uh, University has uh, uh, exchange uh, programs between other universities, let's say in Japan. I understand it's maybe in medicine, it's maybe not so common, but uh, it is uh, possible and of course uh, a sixth year if uh, you have uh, this uh, practice uh, it's uh, you are welcome to go somewhere on your home country or somewhere else mm -hmm. abroad yeah mm -hmm. thank you very much a uh, question about achievement scholarship is it possible to get it if you are studying medicine do you know, do you know? Achievement scholarship. I've never heard of this scholarship. <laughs> mm. um, yeah, maybe uh, you can ask this question from admissions uh, at uh, ut.e uh, more in details. That would be the best. Um, what are the biggest advantages of the University of Tartu compared to studying medicine in other countries? So why our applicants should choose University of Tartu to study medicine? Why did you choose Estonia? I don't know. Well, I chose Estonia because of the vibes, which doesn't <laughs> like when I came to visit here was really it was some uh, an area that I would I know that I would feel comfortable in. Um, other reasons I chose it because it was the best. Well, it's the only in the country, but also the best in the country. So I knew that they like the resources for it would be basically top notch in this country. 
Um, yeah, and in the league table for European universities, it's quite okay, so, yeah. <laughs> yes, we have a good ranking also, so yeah. this is a it's good reason. Worth to mention, of course. Uh, there is also a question to Aziza. What was the biggest cultural shock for you moving to Estonia as a student in medicine? Um, I would say one of the largest cultural shocks I experienced was... Not, well, it's not necessarily a bad thing, but the patriotism for this country, I really like it. I think it's quite charming, actually. But, um, for example, on independent, my first Independence Day here, it was the 100th, so I guess I came at a <laughs> good time. But hearing all the, the nationalistic songs and Estonian hymns f about praising the country, like, oh, the fatherland and all those things, I really like it, especially because coming from the UK, we don't really... Not everyone is so patriotic about the country and um, yeah, I really, and also it makes sense, especially when you think about the history of the country and everything. So I really, yeah, that was quite interesting difference when compared to my country. Yeah. If I may ask, what the most Estonian things that you have done in Estonia? <laughs> The most Estonian thing, well, I joined a choir, so I think that would be quite, yeah, especially seeing how important singing is in Estonian culture, especially with the singing revolution in the early 90s. So I would say that's probably the most Estonian thing I've done. Thank you very much. Uh, we have uh, questions about transferring from other universities. So basically, if it's possible to transfer from other university to our uh, medical program. Unfortunately not, uh, because uh, probably, most probably, the the programs are different, the curriculums are different, so due to educational differences we don't accept transfer students. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Also questions about motivation letter. What should I write in the motivation letter? On our web page, uh, and I think that in the Dream Apply or wherever you should uh, submit the application, there is a point about what we would like you to write about. So about why why University of Tartu, uh, among all the others, uh, how how much chemistry, physics, biology have you learned before, um, etc. I don't know, Aziza, you also wrote motivational letter, I think. Mm -hmm. Maybe you have some tips you know, for our future applicant how to write a successful motivation letter. Write it yourself. <laughs> uh, yeah, of course, definitely write it yourself. This was a very long time ago though. <laughs> but I think I also, I wrote about some of my ambitions for after uh, graduation. I uh, wrote about Est Estonia itself, like what I knew about the country and why I was choosing the country. Um, yeah, and also my motivations for medicine in general and my inspirations while I was growing up. Thank you very much. Another question we have about internship. How difficult is to get internship in the University of Tartu clinic? I think that, uh, well, when you come from some other country, I mean, this is what they mean, I think. Yeah. Uh, we accept uh, interns well, first and for, from our partner universities. So, I guess uh, more like if you're studying the program, if mm -hmm. you get internship, like at the clinics of the University of Tartu, being like enrolled as a degree student. Uh, I don't know about uh, international students, but uh, I hope in case you are uh, already know Estonian language, then. I think it's not hard because I know Estonian students, they, there are a lot of, lot of them who are working in clinic and I understand you're working as a volunteer and, and if you want to, you probably can go to the, yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, question to Aziza. How good is your Estonian? How difficult is to study Estonian? <laughs> can you please comment on that as well? My Estonian is... Okay, at the moment I'm like intermediate. I still have classes because I want to I want to increase my proficiency even more. But I would say from the average Estonian conversation, I would understand like 
seventy percent of what's being said, so it's okay. I can't take medical history from people. Um, yeah, but I'm still trying to improve it. Yeah. Good luck for you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we have some other questions about the interview. So, what should I expect from the interview? This is the first uh, this year as well as the BMAT test. Um, uh, what to expect? Uh, uh, the, f the one thing uh, we are trying to understand how uh, about your English. Uh, 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 some things the same as were in the motivational letter. Uh, I think it will be not too long, um, but don't worry. Nothing scary. It is via web, so nobody bites you. <laughs> Everything will be okay. Thank you very much. Uh, so we have another question uh, related to the admissions as well. Um, just a second. Um, is uh, GPA is important while applying to medicine? No, it's not. Uh, you have to submit your um, uh, documents, of course, but uh, but it's PMAT uh, motivational letter and entrance interview that we are calculating. If I still study in, in school, can I still apply? So I guess the question is that the applicant doesn't have still certificate of secondary education. If they are uh, graduating this year, then yes, they can uh, submit their documents later on after, after yes, after the, they have gotten them. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Uh, a question to Aziza about accommodation. How difficult is to find accommodation in, in Tartu? Um, I live in the dorm. Uh, I think we got our admissions results relatively late compared to when you're meant to apply for accommodation but I was still successful um, yeah if you're too late then you will have to look for flats outside the dorms but I think everyone is more or less like able to get a place mm -hmm. and they will get their results uh, sooner this year so they should have plenty of time to apply for a dormitory or whatever yeah. And sooner than Estonians, so yeah. <laughs> so more chances to get a place in dormitory. Yeah, thank you. So uh, next question is uh, um, uh, regarding the uh, future career perspectives. So uh, can I work in Estonia after graduation? Yes, if you register yourself in a health board, yeah. It's... Uh, uh, you can do it and you can go to the PhD studies, uh, do some science, stay in here in Estonia. Um, yeah. What is the compulsory level of English language requirements? Uh, I think it's P, P, P2, but uh, if you successfully uh, complete the PMAT test, then this uh, is the one that actually confirms that your English is sufficient enough. Mm -hmm. So basically for this program, uh, uh, the separate test is not required, so you don't need to be worried about that. So the biomedical test is basically a proof of knowledge uh, of both bio like biology basically and then the English proficiency. Yes, and the motivation letter also yes. that is in English, so this also proves your English. Yeah, that speaks for it, yeah for itself basically. Uh, yes. Uh, so another question. Um, uh, just a second. Uh, um, what uh, is uh, uh, compulsory level of Estonian? On the first year, zero. Yeah. Yeah. But while graduating, uh, I think you have mentioned during your presentation that maybe we can. Yeah. Yeah. Be two. All right. Okay, uh, so the question to Aziza uh, just uh, also came. Uh, Aziza, would you recommend to choose University of Tartu? Yeah, uh, oh wow, sorry. <laughs> 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 yeah, I do, um, especially if you're ready to come here with an open mind for new experiences and 
Yeah, I would recommend also depending on like if you're from a totally different place to come here, then definitely. And if you haven't had much uh, prior ex exposure to Estonia, like I didn't, a lot of people in the UK didn't really know that much about the country. So I feel like it was even better coming here with like no prior knowledge. But yeah, definitely. There is also another question about how international is the program. It was already mentioned, I guess you also mentioned that you have uh, a lot of Finnish uh, students as well, but what can, what other nationalities you have as well, if you... Uh, okay, um, so in my year alone we have, okay, UK, New Zealand, Malaysia, in low years we have Turkey, South Korea, Australia, the US, Japan. Japan, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so basically people from all around the world and uh, yeah. all uh, continents as well. Uh, so yes, um, another question about uh, can I study dentistry at the University of Tartu? I guess it means in English. In English you can't. Mm -hmm. But uh, afterwards you have finished uh, six years of medicine, uh, then you already know Estonian, then it's uh, possible to come to study uh, dentistry in Estonia as well, yeah. Mm -hmm. There is also a question from a potential person to study residency. Is it, uh, um, is it possible to start residency at the University of Tartu? Uh, yes, but uh, the residency is only in Estonian. This is the difference from the uh, first six years, but yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And we uh, we have some, uh, our English program uh, uh, graduates uh, s studying here in residency programs. How long does it last, uh, the residency? Uh, it depends on uh, program, uh, three to five years, mostly four and five. Mm -hmm. Also have one question about PhD. So do you have PhDs in English and uh, uh, what uh, programs do you have? Uh, from this year we are having a new program called medicine and sports and there are four specialties uh, uh, medicine sports and neuroscience and pharmacy and uh, they are all can be taken in english as well um, there is no restrictions you can do it in english most thing uh, important thing that you should have uh, a supervisor mm -hmm. and that uh, yeah yeah, it's, uh, you can also visit the website probably and you could see potential supervisors and maybe contact yes. them yeah. before uh, applying. Yes. <laughs> yes, there is a question also to Aziza. What are your plans after graduation? Oh, I, in I intend to go back to the UK to work as a doctor and live here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, they, I think, still accept European medical degrees, even though Brexit. But yeah, it should be fine. But would you like to stay in Estonia or you you decided already? So Yeah, I kind of had it in mind. I don't know, I'm, my mind is open to like be changed, but at the moment, not really. Mm -hmm. Another question, can I work immediately after six years? Yes. Mm -hmm. Another question about languages. Can I study other languages while studying medicine? Yes, absolutely. As Aziza said, you learned Czech, Korean. Yeah, uh, Korean, yeah. Korean, yeah. 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 I studied, yeah. I took two semesters of Korean and other people have taken Spanish and French. Yeah, you can study whatever you want. Oh, that's amazing. So you can just uh, choose so uh, any languages that are offered at the university. And also, as Aziza pointed out, she also had some uh, selective courses which were outside of curriculum. So it gives a better overview of uh, everything as well. Okay, I uh, can see that we don't have uh, questions coming anymore. Uh, so if you still have uh, any questions, you can write us. And uh, otherwise, if you don't have questions, you can always uh, uh, also email to uh, everyone who is right now on the stage because you are going to receive the presentation. You have also the name of the speakers in uh, workshop. So if you have any other questions, you can also contact us. Or if you have any specific admission related question, it's good to contact our admission office uh, uh, by writing to admissions at ut.e. Uh, Yes, uh, um, 
I think we don't have, since we don't have questions anymore, I would like to thank you very much for being with us uh, today. Thank you, our dear speakers, for introducing your program. Uh, thank you very much, Aziza, for sharing your student experience. Uh, thank you very much for being with us. Uh, remember about the application deadline, which is coming uh, quite soon, 15th of April, so don't forget to take a biomedical test. Hopefully you already registered for it. If not, then uh, maybe you're looking... See you next year. See you next year. <laughs> yes, if you have any questions during this, uh, still we have uh, months, more than months, so you still can ask them. But we wish you good luck uh, in your, with your application, good luck with your admissions. We hope to see you next uh, academic year at our university. And also, I would like to ask you not to leave right now. We are going to have a short break and then after we are going to continue with online tours around the University of Tartu campus. And then you're going to see how biomedicum and also chemicum, as I learned today, <laughs> uh, looks like if you would like uh, to study medicine at the University of Tartu. So thank you very much and see you soon.
you very much for being with us today and thank you very much for participating in this third day of the Open Doors at the University of Tartu. But we are done with our info sessions and today we introduced our bachelor's programs in business administration, science and technology and our joint uh, program, uh, joint bachelor's and master's program in medicine. I hope you received uh, quite a lot of information that will be useful for you in the future and you enjoyed our info session. But uh, we are not finishing right now, we are still have uh, campus tours around the University of Tartu and you can actually join us online and see how our buildings look inside. So please uh, stay with us right now and enjoy watching the tours around the University of Tartu. And I would like also to mention that these tours are including the tours around University of Tartu Delta Building, Chemicum, Physicum, Biomedicum, Institute of Technology and also our dormitory. So this overview is going to be very useful for you if you are planning to study at our university and if you are planning to live in the dormitory. So I wish you, uh, uh, I wish you uh, the best of the luck. Thank you for being with us. Enjoy watching our tours and see you tomorrow. Hello beautiful people, my name is Mirei Bisimbaev, I'm a bachelor student of the business administration program and today I'm gonna take you on a tour around the University of Tartu Delta Center and for those who do not know this is a beautiful place and we're gonna embark on a fascinating journey around the many cozy study spots that you can find here and the unique architecture. So, for, and this is also a home to the Institute of Computer Science, the School of Economics and Business Administration, the Institute of Technology, Mathematics and Statistics, and also the Delta Building is a center for entrepreneurship and innovation. And with its state-of-the-art architecture and being located in the heart of Tartu, this is an important landmark in the city, and it's literally just a stone's throw away from the several dormitories and uh, also the Raikoya Platz in the center of the city. So this is very convenient for an always late and not a morning person like me. I believe if you are watching this video, you are very likely to be interested in how the typical cluster in Delta building looks like. So let's peek inside and take a better look at what the classrooms are. So the premises are in short very modern and spacious and it's like a really great spot to soak up this knowledge and maybe even take a nap during the lecture, but we don't tell about it to anyone. And uh, yeah, the place feels good. And there's also like interactive desks and so much more, but we're gonna also take a look at uh, computer class later on. So you're gonna see how the seminars are conducted as well. Yeah. All right, before we enter the library, check how cool is that. The uh, public printers available all around Delta building so I believe there is one on every floor and you can uh, go online like sign up log in upload your documents in PDF ch uh, choose how you want them to be printed and then pick a printing location and just print them like right here and that's very cool but now to the library all right we're gonna try to be quiet so the library is a great spot to study and also a silent retreat if you want to escape your roommates. You can find lots of books about mathematics, economics and computer science over here. And it just feels great. I'm also going to show you that there are desktop computers available right here at your disposal if you want to study, for example, and have like bigger screens. But just a nice cozy place with a great view, of course. What I also like about the University of Tartu is that it also tries to be a partner for Estonian entrepreneurs. There is the University of Tartu spin-off program, as to be a launchpad incubator, and also Delta Sandbox program, industrial MA program in IT, and many other things. And what I like about Delta building is that it actually accommodates a lot of um, offices like Cybernetica, Statistics Estonia, Swedbank, and so on and so forth. So it actually brings this uh, science-based entrepreneurship and research closer to the university students. And this is like really great. And I, maybe, who knows, you're gonna come here and uh, also intern in one of these companies like some of my friends did. Also, there is a UT startup lab right over here. Shout out to them for organizing really great startup camps and accelerator programs and all kinds of entrepreneurial events. Uh, so I am really grateful that there is a program like that that can help you to test and 
kickstart and supercharge your ideas. And if you do not know, definitely check the entrepreneurial scene in Estonia because like, you know, there are like more than six unicorns right now. So if you have any like cool ideas, definitely this is your place to go and check it out. But surely it's not always about feeding your curiosity or soul. So if you're hungry or running short on time, you can always get a decent and fairly priced hot meal right over here. And I'll be lying if I didn't mention this view outside is lovely too. Right now we're about to enter probably the busiest place in the whole uh, building. Uh, this area is usually crowded with lots of students and is always bustling and you can always meet your friends and course mates right here and it's a perfect place you know to study to cram for your exams or panic before exams or you know brainstorm ideas chit chat have fun with your friends and for example check this out I love this honeycombs it's perfect for group work you know and it's very silent inside you can switch on a light you know, uh, do your group projects, uh, come up with great ideas, and uh, yes. So what else is great about this place, there's, there are also private study spaces like this one. So for example, if you want something more private, you can always come here with your laptop or textbooks, whatever, and enjoy studying here as well. And another really awesome thing, in my opinion, is that this whole study area has this cool kitchen. We can check it out as well. So if you wanna keep your engine running or you know starving, want just to drink a tea or something, you can also come hang out in here. Anything you can think of, you can find in this place. Right now we're in a computer class and that's where you will have seminars or other kind of lectures. And um, I just love studying with these big screens, it's very convenient. And there are also like two big projector screens as well. So you can see the whole process of what your lecture is doing in your computer and you can like try to repeat and replicate and it's just a really great place to study in. What you can see right now is a high performing computing center. It provides the largest, uh, Baltic's largest computational infrastructure power for scientific research. And also, let's just like see how the, what is the design like across this whole hall. There are like locker rooms there, different like even more like computer classes. All right, let's move on and let's try to get more understanding of the look and feel of the Delta building. So right now you see like a second floor, there are even more computer classes right here and also like different laboratories, like for example, this digital laboratory or the robotics field over there. And generally, there are, like apart from that, there are also like in the Internet of Things laboratory, the laboratory of computers, uh, graphic and um, virtual reality. And while we also walk in, let me also share quickly a story behind the name of the Delta building. So Delta was chosen in a competition in 2016. There were one, over 170 name proposals, uh, such as Iconicum, Logicum, Sigma, uh, to name a few, but Delta was chosen because uh, the building resembles a triangular shape and also it symbolizes um, basically the energy for a center and just generally look at it. I feel this is a very inspiring setting to like, you know, get even more ideas and to study in. Right now we're on a third floor and this is an office area where PhD students study and work and also there's academic staff offices around and here we are entering a chill zone for PhD students and staff to unwind, you know, relax, have a cup of coffee. There's a ping pong table, like an open stage to play musical instruments and all kinds of uh, fun stuff right here. Also, even a PlayStation. Sometimes great ideas find us in the most unusual places. And uh, one of these such places is definitely a balcony right over here. The university is not always about work and research and you can always have some fun time as well and this is definitely a place to go like this great balcony on the third floor you can even do grill here during the summer and the view here is just very gorgeous and inspiring so if you want to get some fresh air i definitely recommend to visit this place we are in a delta sandbox area right now and delta sandbox is a design thinking and digital product management program for my students in the university of tartu and this is an experimental playground for interdisciplinary teams to come together, test their bold ideas, um, 
have a collaboration with product managers uh, from like great companies like Telia, Bolt, Pipedrive. Basically, um, students can have an opportunity to get a hands-on experience in product management by like working on real life challenges of these companies. And this is where they held their events. You know, chill as well. It's just another like inspiring uh, venue to study and you know come together enhance your professional skills thank you for tuning in i hope you enjoyed this video and found our tour informative and i'm really looking forward to seeing you around in tartu and especially in the university of tartu delta center hello my name is rauno and uh, i will be uh, your tour guide for uh, this building which is the Institute of uh, Physics of the University of Tartu, or uh, in other words, the Physicum. And uh, currently we are uh, in the first room that you get to when you enter the building, which is the lobby. And uh, as you can see, uh, there are a lot of tables here. And uh, this is like the main place where uh, students uh, hang out, where they uh, uh, do their homework and uh, this is sort of like a socialization uh, hub and uh, pretty much when the semester is going on you can see students here all the time even during the night like uh, when you come here at uh, 1 a.m. or 2 a.m. you can st see some, uh, some uh, students uh, studying hard for their exams and not only physics students or chemist students or uh, material scientists who all together study in this building but also like uh, uh, doctor students who uh, unfortunately cannot be in their own house because they are not allowed to be there uh, during, during the night hours. But here it is possible. So uh, we are going to see the first uh, room that uh, our lectures are being taken in. There are other rooms as well, uh, that side and that side, but uh, this will be uh, our biggest room that you can have your lectures in. As you can see, this is uh, quite big. It fits around uh, 200 people and uh, it's quite necessary to fit 200 people around here because uh, for uh, us, the physicists and uh, our buddies, the chemists and material scientists, well, we are not so many and we can fit here uh, quite good. But when, uh, let's say, doctor students or or computer science students come here well they have their uh, first year lectures and uh, then there are like more than 200 of them so every seat is filled so as i have uh, mentioned uh, this building is not only for physicists but for uh, lots of other people in the natural sciences uh, curriculum uh, as well so quite a multicultural or multi-student building uh, as well each student has uh, these uh, nice, uh, nice chairs for themselves, a table, a few outlets for the laptop. So quite a nice room where to, to have your lectures and uh, look at the big screens where, uh, where the lecturer has his notes. So this is the workshop and uh, everyone knows what is uh, done in the workshop. So uh, in here students can uh, get uh, their uh, get in touch with the uh, practical side, get a hands-on experience. As you can see, there is, uh, I don't know, some, uh, some wave machine on the table, but uh, there can be lots of things. I have seen people build like, uh, like a vacuum cleaner here or some sort of uh, cannons and uh, all kinds of things. And uh, we are quite well equipped here. And from more from these uh, tools, we also have uh, these all kinds of uh, dangerous uh, chemicals that all kinds of, uh, uh, when uh, science theater uh, people uh, rehearse their, uh, their audiences, then all kinds of like elephant toothpaste uh, can be seen here on the table and uh, lots of stuff like that. And uh, next door, we also have the electronics uh, lab or workshop or whatever you like to call it. So this is the place where you can uh, do your soldering, work on your uh, motherboard, whatever uh, electronics uh, related. And uh, I have been in this workshop uh, for, uh, for a few times myself because uh, I took part in the Robotex competition. Me and my uh, groupmates uh, built, this is just a frame, but uh, me and my groupmates uh, built a cool 
basketball robot that uh, had this frame kind of uh, just like that and it threw a basketball and it was quite cool. We are now entering the optics lab, which is uh, one of the many labs in this uh, building because uh, first and foremost, Physicum uh, is a building where science is done. So apart from the optics lab, we have uh, like nuclear physics and nanophysics, atmospheric physics, uh, ion crystals, name something else physics because I can't remember all of those labs. But uh, in short, there's uh, lots of labs. And uh, we are looking at the optics lab. And as you can see, well, lots of uh, optics related uh, equipment lying around on the table. I'm sure there's at least uh, five lasers here somewhere. And uh, my personal hypothesis is that uh, in every lab in Physicum, there's at least one laser. So far, everyone, uh, every lab I've been in, there's been at least one. And uh, <clears throat> students can join uh, these labs uh, quite early on. Uh, I had my first experience on my second year, where we had a course that uh, actually required us to uh, work together with the lab, do kind of like a mini bachelor's thesis. And uh, if you want, you can even join a lab on the first year and do like this world grade uh, science here. But apart from, uh, from uh, this uh, more uh, serious science, uh, students can join uh, these optional courses where you can do cool things such so this was uh, the uh, photonics project uh, this is uh, my and my friend's uh, personal project uh, sadly it doesn't work uh, right now but it's a laser music instrument so when I would uh, turn it on there would be this uh, uh, lasers and when I put my fingers there ooh, you can you can do music and another uh, from uh, my uh, course mates so this is uh, uh, Edward Munch's scream and the uh, point is that when you talk really really low really low then uh, it's uh, kind of like blue but when you yeah! you do like that then uh, you get uh, these uh, uh, bluer uh, colors and uh, low then it's redder right now we are uh, next to the students uh, favorite uh, place which is the students room and uh, this is the students favorite uh, entertainment uh, object as you would say uh, we got this foosball table a few uh, years back before the foosball uh, all we did was uh, ping pong but uh, when the foosball table came everyone uh, sadly forgot about ping pong maybe uh, partly because uh, the ping pong table is uh, in the cellar and the foosball table is not but uh, such are things. And we are entering the students' room uh, themselves, we, itself. And uh, as you can see, uh, once again, lots of uh, places to just uh, relax. Some people sleep here occasionally uh, to study, chat with your uh, mates, all kinds of things uh, you need to do to uh, relax, study and uh, feel good about yourself. Usually there are a lot of uh, uh, cool drawings on uh, uh, on that uh, as well, the more stressed students have, the cooler pictures uh, get here. Uh, kind of like uh, with memes, but, uh, but yes, uh, this room is handled by the Estonian Physics Students Society. And uh, the name says physics, but we also have our uh, buddies, the chemists and material scientists, some computer science uh, guys, and uh, our society is uh, the one that keeps the student life going. Uh, in this building. So we take care of uh, new students, we uh, organize lots of events, and so on. So this was our little tour of the Physicum. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope to see you the next autumn. Bye! Tere, um, my name is Hazar. I'm a master's student of analytical chemistry, and welcome to Chemicum. What's here in Chemicum? So Chemicum is the home to University of Tartu's um, Institute of Chemistry. So this building has been over for 10 years and has been funded by Estonian government as part of the research infrastructure projects. So to get here, it's um, 20 minutes by bus from the city center or you could do some walking for 30 minutes if you prefer some exercise. So 
I will not make this um, intro longer and let's take a look. Okay, so now we're here at the lobby of Chemicum. So you can see right here, it's very open and very spacious. And I think you can see about everything from here. So you can see the, ca the library and then you can also see the cafeteria and some rooms here. And so um, let's take a walk and show where we're headed. If we need some help with something or we want to locate something that we're not sure where it is, we can ask for the information desk. Okay, now we're here at the Chemicum Library. So what can you find here? So everything chemistry related resources, so books, um, journals, newsletters, you can find it here. And if you're also looking for um, online resources, we also have um, PCs upstairs and if you don't have a PC you can always access UT's Wi-Fi network so there would be no problem for you. So like I've said with a Chemicum library you have access to different kinds of chemistry related resources. So here you can see that there are numerous amounts of um, computers where you can um, do some last minute assignments perhaps or access the UT network or if you don't have any um, PC, you can always use um, the Wi-Fi network which is free for the University of Tartu students and it's very fast so you don't have to worry about it. So here at Chemicum, we are proud to present and recognize our notable um, university alumni and professors that made significant contributions to the scientific community as well as the society. So here we present to you um, some notable professors and alumni of the university. One of those is Wilhelm Oswald. So if you know Wilhelm Oswald, he's a scientist, a chemist who was working with chemical kinetics and chemical equilibria. And he won the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 1909. So there you go. Now we enter the Chemicum Auditorium. So you can see here where our classes mostly take place. So here you can see that there are a lot of seats that are very comfortable and very spacious. And here uh, we are encouraged to um, participate in learning discussions with the different students and different teachers. So that is in order to uh, promote uh, stimulated learning and just do some brainstorming. Okay, so we're now here at the most important area of the Chemicum building. So, so far we've discussed all these places but we haven't gone to the most important. Chemistry is nothing without the laboratory, right? So before we enter the lab, always safety first. So let's take a look inside of the teaching lab. What I like here in the teaching lab is that they have this um, complete facilities where students can engage in different kinds of experiments. So here you can do um, simple chemical reactions or you can also work with the laboratory's big guns. So you can see that there are lots of fancy um, equipment right here where students can do their experiments, their chemical analysis. And let's take a look at one of them. So how are you doing? Fine. Yeah. And you? I'm good. So what, 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 what is this? Can you tell me something about? This is a chromatogram mm -hmm. and we are doing a um, specific analysis here. Uh -huh. So I'm waiting for the results. Oh, okay. Well, that's nice. Yeah. And here, Hello. hi, what, what are you doing? Um, I'm doing gas chromatography. Mm -hmm. Wow. And you're doing some analysis right there? Yes, yes. What I like about Chemicum's teaching lab personally is that aside from its um, big facility, you can also see that we have um, very expansive views from the outside of the outside. So it feels like it the area is very breathable. But just to remember not to inhale any chemical fumes from your experiments. We have fume hoods and vacuum vents for that, okay? So from the teaching labs, we now go to some um, research labs. So one of University of Tartu's uh, um, main research labs here is the NMR lab in Chemicum. So like I've said before, this is one of the lab uh, university's big guns. So what can we do here? So for applications, when we do some analysis, chemical analysis, we want to identify a particular um, let's say molecule 
organic molecules for some sorry for the technical jargons but yeah here you can see this big magnetic instrument and you can um, with this instrument you can elucidate some chemical structures identify specific compounds that you want to purify or isolate and that's it we're at the second most important area of chemicum so we're hungry so we need food so let's take a look at the cafeteria or what we like to call it the coffee yeah hope i said it right <laughs> so um here you can see that the area is very spacious and you can have a lot of comfortable chairs to sit on and do some chit chat with your classmates and do some assignments again <laughs> and in terms of the food, they have a wide selection, so whatever you need, they have it from main course, vegan options, pastries, desserts, soups, you name it. Also beverages, and not to mention it's very cheap. So food here costs around 5 euros in general, so that's a pretty good deal. So that's it for me. This was Chemicum. My name is Hazar, and see you soon here in Tartu. Bye! Dear future students, welcome to Tartu and tour of Biomedicum. This building is home for Faculty of Medicine and all medical, dentistry, physiotherapy and pharmacy students have at least for once have visited here. We're glad to have you along our tour in Biomedicum. Oh, and we forgot to mention, this is Ege and I'm a fourth year medical student. And I'm Efe. And now we are in the atrium where all departments look at this beautiful sunlight and also in New Year's Eve it gets decorated beautifully. Now, let's move on to the big auditorium. And now we're in the big auditorium where many of the lectures happen. However, even if you won't have any lectures in this room, I'm sure you'll have at least one daily exam. Apart from lectures and exams, there are different scientific conferences and nice activities happening here. Now, let's move on to the practical teaching classes. After all, I feel like studying all of this all over again. Uh, I got you covered. Oh, thank you. Welcome to our library. Here, you will, ha you will find many different resources, medical textbooks, journal articles, and at the backside, you can have access to online databases. And surely you will find yourself cramming for the tests here. And now, we're in one of the practical teaching classes, the microbiology lab. Here, we get to stain different microorganisms and then look at them under the light microscope to see their structure and their disease-causing mechanisms to learn more about them. At the end of this corridor, we have a nice balcony where you can have a great view of Tartu University Hospital, also known as Klinikum. Here, after third year, we move on to the hospital to continue our bedside teaching. And now we're here downstairs where Biomedicum Cafeteria and Cloakroom is situated. Also, the main nutrient for students, caffeine, is here. Now we're in Schmidt Keskos, or Schmidt Center, where we have the newest teaching classes in Biomedicum. Here we also have many different lectures, practicals, and it's very comfy to have lectures here. And this is all from our trip. Thank hey, you. Wait. You forgot one of the most interesting places in Biomedicum, oh. the dissection halls. Let's go. Welcome to the dissection halls, also known as La Hangusa. Here, first year medical students learn more about human anatomy and get to practice on real cadavers. Apart from serving as a dissection hall, here you can see unique specimens of the collection of our anatomy department. And this marks the end of our tour. Thank you for your patience. And maybe we'll see you here next autumn. Bye. Bye. Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Institute of Technology. My name is Artemi, and I'll be your guide today. So this is the first room when you enter the building. Here you can leave your coat, go grab a snack, or go straight to the classroom. We are now in the biggest auditorium in the building, room 121. Here you're going to have your first info session where you're going to meet your uh, course mates, fellow science and technology students, and program director. And here, after three years of high wor hard work, you're going to defend your thesis. 
Institute of Technology is an interesting place. Here, on one floor, you can meet plant biologists and also robotic specialists. Let's start with the plants, shall we? Welcome to the plant paradise! Here we grow some common plants in ideal conditions, ideal humidity, ideal temperature, ideal dark light cycle, and all in the name of science. When the plants are ready, we transfer them to the gas exchange chamber. So let's take a look at that. Here you see our miracle machine, or state-of-the-art device, which was designed and built in the Institute of Technology. This uh, uh, device allows uh, researchers to check how different mutations affect the gas exchange in the plants. And in the nutshell, how we can save fresh water in agriculture. So we are now in robotics wing. Here, researchers think of different things. For example, how to make online shopper better by uh, making robots take the shape of your body so you can see how it fits. Or how robots can mix your drink or a cup of coffee. Or even more, how soft robots, which mimic uh, biology, can revolutionize future medicine. When doing biology experiments, you first need to sterilize things, your equipment, as well as growth medias in this machine called autoclave. And afterwards, when you're doing the experiments, usually they need cold temperature. That's why we always take this slice from the ice machine. So we are now in a, a safety cabinet room. Here, researchers work with the cell culture line, which are very fragile and need to be held in the sterile conditions. Already in the first semester, you will get a practice and work with them here in the safety cabinets. We are in the microscope room uh, where we study yeast cells and their cell cycle with the help of fluorescent microscope. As you can see, you can um, follow the cells uh, from the time course and different positions and then you get a lot of data which you further analyze on the computer. Okay guys, if your first thought is uh, UV light, then you are right. And what you see here, these are DNA bands, the same DNA as in every living organism. And if you are wondering why you are not uh, fluoresced in the solarium, it's very easy. You don't see the DNA itself, but the dye which is uh, uh, connected to the DNA. We are in the molecular biology lab right now, and I'm going to show you different devices and different things we do here. For example, this machine is called centrifuge and it's uh, basically help us precipitate samples and uh, get rid of the li uh, excessive liquids. And this one here is called micropipette and its sole purpose is to transfer liquids from one tube to another with a precision to microliter. And now I'm going to show you the device you all heard of, the PCR machine. These are the PCR samples and we all did the test for corona and the machine looks like that. You put sample inside, close the lid and press start. As simple as that. Welcome to the home to the one and only Estonian iGEM team where students work on their project um, bond, have fun, and achieve incredible results. You, future science and technology student, can join the team already in the first course. While doing the project, they don't only sit in the lab, they also collaborate with different teams and also do some public events and even create the art pieces. We're in a so-called shaker room, so you've seen the plants paradise and this one is microorganism paradise. So these are here yeast cells and which grew overnight in ideal conditions with ideal temperature and ideal shaking to make sure that every cell gets enough oxygen. And these here are centrifuges. So you've seen one on the tabletop, right? But this one is much bigger and can do much higher speeds. On the fourth floor, there is also the office of uh, Science and Technology Program Director, Ilona Faustova. If you ever need any help, the door is always open for you. Hey, am I interrupting? So here students can always get help, support and brainstorm their great ideas. Good luck, guys. If uh, Shaker is a microorganism paradise, then this is Paradise 2.0. 
Here you can control everything connected to the growth of microorganisms, from the input of fresh media to their pH and temperature and uh, different gases, and you can monitor all that stuff on the computer live. So, we are in the proteomics core facility of the University of Tartu. Here the protein samples are analyzed and determined. And they do that not only for the university, but also for uh, customers abroad and even to the cheese farms. Sounds cool, right? And this machine here is HPLC, which uh, can help you determine which chemicals are in solutions. So we are in the classrooms where you're going to have your seminars, lectures, or even robotics practical sessions. Our tour is coming to an end. But don't forget to apply and join our science and technology family. Hi, my name is Aileen. I'm an international student ambassador from Azerbaijan. I live in a Ratusa 22 dormitory and today we are going to show the home tour for you. It's our common area. We have tennis tables here. We also have a coffee machine here and the printer. It's the place where we hang out with our friends and play tennis. And here you can check your skin temperature. You should stand here and your skin temperature will appear on the screen. And we also have a screen here where you can read all the instructions about this dormitory and read some more information about other residence halls by just clicking. And it's our bicycle storage. We need our access chip for entering this area. It's very comfortable to have a safe place for keeping our bicycles, scooters or whatever we have. It's really convenient to live in this dorm. Our doors are also electrical, so we don't need to touch anything for entering the building. And in the lobby we also have a 24-7 reception, so we can ask for help anytime we need. And also on the ground floor we have six rooms for students with reduced mobility and it's our laundry room. Again, we need our access chip for entering this room. We have six washing and six dyeing machines here. Using the machines is free, but we need to bring our own washing detergent. Let's move on to the elevator. Again, we need our access chip. And now I'm going to show you my apartment. Each apartment has three twin rooms, a common area where we keep our shoes and coats, a toilet and a bathroom. And also we have our kitchen here. It's a small place but it's pretty convenient for students and we have almost everything necessary here. Let's get inside my room. I live alone in a room for two because I think it's complicated to share your room with someone. You have two beds here two study desks, some bookshelves, and a big window which makes the room a cozier place. That's all for today. Thank you for watching this video. I hope that it was helpful for you. See you in Tartu.